This podcast has been brought to you by Voyager's World. We are building the most amazing hospitality network. Please visit our website, join us for free, and start participating. Okay. Cheers, man. Cheers. <laughs> so here I have manual art. Right. Right? Correct. And so I couch surf uh, here with manual about uh, two years ago, right? In 2014. And and since then we have we, we kept in touch. Mm -hmm. you know, we kept talking and I am visiting again. Yeah, so, welcome back. <laughs> very, yeah, very, very, very happy for that. And so you, you have been couch surfing and traveling and doing a lot of things. So just, just, just give, give people a little, like the three minute uh, elevator speech about <laughs> what you do, what, what you are about. What I do? Oh uh, mm -hmm. well, in general, I'm electrical engineer. Um, and I had always this dream of leaving for quite a while. Don't show the beer. <laughs> <laughs> for leaving for quite a while. Quite a while means leaving proper <laughs> and mm -hmm. not just for holidays. Mm -hmm. So what I did um, last year, like I just returned a couple of weeks ago, was I stopped working for an entire year and traveled the mm -hmm. world, even though... I just managed four mm -hmm. continents and uh, 15 or 16 countries. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Very often I, I like to, to discuss with people how, on, on the podcast, because I believe that's a very useful thing, I discuss how do you pay for this. So how, uh, because the solutions are as numerous as the people I, I discover, I thought that one method would predominate. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't. So how did that work for you? Okay, for me, um, first of all, when I decided to do that, I had no money at all. N no money. I had a really expensive apartment. I had a car. Mm -hmm. So basically, in my entire salary was gone every month. Uh -huh. um, so Sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I just, um, like when, when my dad was talking to me, he said, like, wouldn't you need to save a little bit for later? So, uh, no, I never, I, I just lived into the day. I lived for the moment, kind of. Uh -huh. But once I did the, had the decision, made the decision that I really going to do that, I changed a lot of things in my life. First of all, I got rid of my expensive apartment. Now I'm in this apartment, which is one third of the cost before. It's still very nice. It is a re it's a really nice apartment. Yeah. I'm really lucky with that. Yeah. Um, the second is I, I sold my car, mm -hmm. so I sold a lot of furniture because I love a big apartment, small apartment now. And then the third, and I think the most uh, important thing is I talked to my boss. Uh -huh. So I'm lucky that I'm working in Germany and we have quite good labor laws over here. Mm -hmm. um, I talked to my boss and I said, boss, mm -hmm. I want to do a world journey. He looked at me and was like, how long do you think you need for a world journey? Mm -hmm. A year. Mm -hmm. And in this moment, I kind of I rushed into something. And my boss was like, oh, okay, wait, I have to think about that. So uh, give me some time and then I will come back to you if mm -hmm. we can do something. A week or two weeks later, he came to me and said like, okay, I allow you to leave for a year. What mm -hmm. do you want to do? And then we have different different models. Mm -hmm. What we did was a sabbatical. Mm -hmm. That means for about one and a half year, I saved my salary. Mm -hmm. uh, not I saved my salary. My, my company paid me only uh, like less, like 70% or, or 60% well, they of still my salary. paid you some. I mean, while I was working there. I was working 100%. Uh -huh. Let's make it easier. Let's say I save one year. And okay. I leave for one year. Okay. Okay. So the first year I'm working a hundred percent, but I'm just getting salary for fifty or fifty percent. Okay. The second year I'm not working at all, but still get fifty percent of the salary. What a nice deal! That's really nice. That's really yeah. nice. And for me, it has mm -hmm. so many benefits. In Germany, we have a lot of social security things like insurances mm -hmm. to pay, and uh, for that, like. 
the system is you pay half of it, your your employer pays half of it. Uh-huh. So my employer actually pays paid two years for it. Mm-hmm. And I saved, since my income was less, I saved taxes. Yeah. I didn't pay that much tax. Yeah. And um, yeah, but in the end, I came back to the same company. Uh-huh. So my boss has the advantage to me keeping in the company. So I think it's a win-win situation. It's win-win because then, you know, you are already experienced. You don't need training. You know, they already know you. Yeah, right. You know, they can plan on you being back. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they know I'm sometimes crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. that's, right. that, that's very good. Okay. So, um, so yeah, usually I like to, to ask people, so how, how, how did you make that work? Yeah. You know? Well, I ended up getting enough money from my, my, my monthly salary that I could actually survive in foreign countries. Mm-hmm. Even though I traveled to, to quite expensive countries. I, I was in, in Japan, in Korea, I was in New Zealand, Australia. All those countries who are not really known for like a budget traveling. Mm-hmm. Um, but I could manage that. And mm-hmm. all the things on top like all the activities I did, all the, pl- uh, all the flights, mm-hmm. uh, I managed with, um, with paying from what I saved before. Mm-hmm. Because on top of that agreement with my company, I also saved every month money since I know that I'm going to leave. Uh-huh. Cool. Um, you, usually, usually people have this... I don't want to... I don't like to be to sound judgmental. That's not what I'm trying to do. But they, to me, it's an excuse. When they say, oh, I would love to do this, but, and then after the word but, there is an explanation of why they don't. Yes. And, and my view is this. <clears throat> there are no, there is not one single uh, li- good lifestyle. Mm-hmm. You know, some people, they work hard and they keep the train arriving on time. That's fine. Someone has to do that. Yeah. Right. And someone has to be, you know, working back at the hospital, keeping things running. Someone has to do other things. My my only, my only suggestion then to people is that look at the phrase that you say. Mm-hmm. If you said, I would love to do this, but... Doing this other thing is important. Just don't say the first part of the phrase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. everything before the but is being negated by everything that comes after. Mm-hmm. And, and just embrace the second part. Yeah. You know, oh, I really like to be here and, and I love my apartment and I want to save for to buying a bigger apartment. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that's fine. Yeah. You no, know, the, uh, it's, it's the conflict that bothers me a little more it's the internal conflict that a lot of people have Mm -hmm. like when they wait they don't work a lot or don't work at all and then they are broke Mm -hmm. well working a lot is fine and being broke is also fine Mm -hmm. working little and being broke and complaining at the same time that's not fine you know that that's the problem yeah yeah you know you can be a beach bum and just surf you know of as far as I'm concerned, that's a fine lifestyle. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't have money for anything, but that's cool. But, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah it's exactly. all right. Did you? Know? you? And, and it's, so I think that people should embrace that. And sometimes having conversations with friends of mine that, that they are working hard and building up something that to me doesn't make sense, but, you know, it wouldn't make sense to me, mm-hmm. but it does make sense to them. Mm-hmm. So, so that's all right. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's when they are searching for a solution to how can I travel. Uh, I really want them to know by watching the podcast that the I don't have money is not an excuse. No. Because I have been talking to people that have traveled without money, yes. that have start trips broke. Mm-hmm. And then they made money along the way. They figure out, they improvise, you know. And some of them found very cool, interesting solutions. Yeah. Uh, some people saved, mm-hmm. and, and some people got really creative. Mm-hmm. I I also think like because I had exactly the same excuses. Mm-hmm. 
I wanted to, to start this journey this one year abroad, like mm -hmm. leaving Germany for a while and, and seeing the world. I have this since I'm, I don't know, 20 something, like 22, like, like mm -hmm. eight years. And mm -hmm. I always had those excuses. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, now I have a stable job. Or now I have a girlfriend. Or now I have this big apartment. Or I don't yeah. have money. All those excuses. Yeah. Until I exactly had the. the I I was I was reading a blog about a guy traveling the world, and then I thought like, if this guy can do it, mm -hmm. why should I not be able to do it? Yeah. I'm as much a guy as this guy is. Uh -huh. I mean, everybody has different. Uh, like, environment uh -huh. precondition different preconditions but why not me yeah i can do i can do everything i want if i want it yeah and that that brought up this we talked yesterday about it mm -hmm. this flame inside me yeah. and i was burning for this idea and suddenly mm -hmm. when i was burning about this and there was no doubt i would not do it mm -hmm. and from that moment on i found solutions for all my buts mm -hmm. and then i got the money i changed my apartment Mm -hmm. okay i didn't have a girlfriend back then so <laughs> but i found a solution for it mm -hmm. so it's it's i think all it is it's a it's if you burn for it or if you don't yeah yeah, yeah i like uh, that quote by by uh Mikulski that it's something i have to paraphrase because i don't remember but it's mm -hmm. something like if if not doing something would drive you into being an alcoholic, that <clears throat> then you should do it, you know. But if if it's not burning you that much, <laughs> if it's not you know, it's not making you uncomfortable, really uncomfortable, you probably shouldn't do it anyway. Yeah, right. Exactly. So so you know if sometimes people would prefer and it would be better for them. To, okay, just take some vacation and go to some place that you like, and that that's good enough. Yeah. Long term traveling has its own pitfalls. It has its Absolutely. benefits, uh, some interesting adventures that it allows, but but it has problems too. Absolutely, uh, the, the logistics get really complicated when you when you leave, you know, for an entire year. Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, during this time that you were traveling. Where you still paying rent? Did you keep this place, or did you give it up and then got it back later? Kind of. Um, before I left, I mean, I knew mm -hmm. what time I'm gonna leave, and then before I left, I I just looked for someone who would want to have an apartment for one year, uh -huh. like from the beginning to know uh -huh. he has to, he or she has to leave mm -hmm. after one year. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I found. A guy, he's in mm -hmm. my in my dojo, and he said, mm -hmm. "Okay, I'm gonna take it for one year." Mm -hmm. And he came in, and I could leave all my all my furniture. So I just yeah. had some boxes to move, and not all well, the furniture, the couch, the bed. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and it it just worked out perfectly. That's that's mm -hmm. so funny. Everything from the first moment on worked as planned. That was, I mean. Mm -hmm. That's not true. There are some obstacles, but all obstacles which are not not a sh uh, showstopper. Mm -hmm. And I kn because if I don't find a guy coming in here, I had a problem because then paying the rent for an entire year is a huge. It will be heavy. Yeah, it will be a lot for for this year. Yeah. Uh, but then I found a guy, and it was it was really good. I know this guy, so when there was something, we could talk, and mm -hmm. yeah, that was really really useful. You you mentioned the dojo. You have been doing martial arts yes. forever, right? Like Not for forever. <laughs> um, <laughs> How I, long have you been doing that? I mean, this particular martial arts I'm doing. I started in two thousand eight. What is it? It's <laughs> it's a Japanese martial arts. The mm -hmm. name is uh, sorry for the pronunciation. If some Japanese are watching that, it's mm -hmm. called I think Buchinkan Budo Taijutsu. So it it what it is it sounds is sounds kinky. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is, can, can you still see that? Like yeah, it is kinky. I yeah. got I had training yesterday. I looked like uh -huh. bad spots. Uh -huh. Um, it is a, a, a um ancient Japanese martial arts, mm -hmm. and uh, it's 
brings so many different elements in it. It's mm -hmm. like we do techniques with weapons, without weapons. Actually, in samurai armor or with ninja suits, like, like hidden techniques. Mm -hmm. And it's so diverse. And that's what I really like about it. It forces me to train things I don't like. For mm -hmm. example, <clears throat> when I was a kid, I like six seven years i did karate mm. and in karate well at least the level i was we didn't have any throws and stuff like that mm -hmm. so i never trained as as a young kid how to throw someone properly like mm -hmm. in judo like those over mm. the shoulder or things like that mm -hmm. um now i have a martial arts where those throws are included and I'm forced to train those, and I hate it every time I do it. Mm -hmm. But it makes me better in that. And the point is, like in every everywhere in, in your life, you like doing things you can do, because I mean, maybe you are a little bit different. But like, look, just imagine. Oh, I imagine my school. I was mm -hmm. bad at German languages in general. I also English. Oh, wasn't. I I identify with that. I'm very bad at. German. <laughs> well, and because I was bad at that subject, <laughs> don't you have some German skills you want to share? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Um, but when when there was a subject I didn't like, mm -hmm. uh, no, I wasn't good at. It, I didn't like it. But then mathematics and physics was something mm -hmm. I was kind of good at it, so mm -hmm. I liked doing it. And that's the same with my martial arts. I like like the techniques which are. Mm, which I'm good at, mm -hmm. but then when it comes to throws, I'm really bad and I don't like doing it. Mm -hmm. But when I train these things, I don't. I'm not good at. Mm -hmm. Then I improve the most. Yeah. But I saw you have the the samurai f armor there and all that that stuff, mm -hmm. and and I'm wondering if it is some martial arts that you use equipment and protection to it, like kempo is like that, right? That you use a helmet and. Mm -hmm. you know a lot of protection and a big stick and all that that's a perfect self-defense yeah system. you know that right yeah, 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 yeah because you know if someone wants to fight with you on the bar you say i oh, just wait a minute and you go to your car and you put a helmet <laughs> you put an armor you're happy oh happy day now and i'm ready let's <laughs> fight get the stick and go back and fight the guy you know yeah, yeah, yeah. super practical uh, <laughs> um well, yeah. in, in normal training, we just have mm -hmm. our regular suits on, which is not protected at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also some like th this this uh, armor, this Japanese armor. Mm -hmm. um, we use it more for shows. It's mm -hmm. not really that we use it. When we do techniques, our trainer says, "Imagine you wear this, so you're a little mm -hmm. bit slower, and you can't like do like really cool movements." Mm -hmm. Not, not, really, not really. I would imagine that even in the ancient times when there were the samurais and all that that stuff, they, they didn't wear, they didn't go, uh, no, they didn't dress like that all the time. It takes True. a while to set it up, and <clears throat> you know they would be, you know, hanging out around the farm, you know, wearing their yes, their yes. pajamas. You know, I don't know what they were. Uh, I remember in the movie that Last Samurai that they mm -hmm. had a much more basic kind of suit that they, mm -hmm. they were wearing inside the compound. Mm -hmm. It was only when they went for for the fight that they put the entire thing. Yeah, yeah, true. You know, the whole shebang. And, it, and it's beautiful, beautiful, totally not practical. <laughs> you know, no, no, no wonder they, they got their ass kicked um, at some point. But but it, but it's it's beautiful. It's very elegant. Mm -hmm. You know, there are usually these things. Uh, even when you really look at it, of course, there is a lot of admiration for some things in the culture, you know, the samurai culture, and all that. But let's be real. It was a mafia. That's what it was. It was a very oppressive government divided in clans that were fighting each other all the time. What is that? 
what is the difference between that and the gangs in Mexico today? <laughs> I don't know what is the difference other than the way they look and the way they dress. Because the 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 philosophy, the strategy, or lack of it, mm-hmm. is the same, you know. Uh, and no wonder it was so easy at a couple times in their history. It was easy to consolidate everything together, mm-hmm. you know. Are you the moment that you have one force that is disproportionately stronger than any of the individual ones? It can just overtake everything, mm-hmm. you know. And that happened, and then the Shogun era came up and then later happened again when the americans came up yeah yeah you true. know yeah. and they and they and and they brought you know the firearms mm-hmm. and all that um in, in in each one of those eras the equation was exactly the same now there are i think that there are some very uh bad misconceptions about things like people say well you know but they could go they could go around and they and they could uh uh uh, basically do anything you know if they didn't like you they will kill you mm-hmm. and it was okay so, well it wasn't okay but who is going to stop them right <laughs> it's, yeah. it's not that there was a law saying that if you are a samurai you can do it it just happens that there is no law saying otherwise that anyone could enforce mm-hmm. right that's that's the only thing mm-hmm. it, it's it was not that it, it was a, a, a beautiful system that had the the samurai on the top of the totem pole because of honor and 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 culture and things like that it was just the a vacuum caused by the lack of rule of law because that's what that that's the situation they had uh people confuse having for example a code of conduct having a code of ethics that is very strong you know and 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 by consequence, their behavior was also very codified mm-hmm. and, and very well understood. That's not the same as rule of law. Rule of law doesn't depend on you being smart. Mm-hmm. It doesn't depend on you being cultured and understanding things. It applies to you no matter how dumb you are, right? <laughs> yeah, the, so the rule of law doesn't depend on the individual. Mm-hmm. Uh, they didn't have that. Mm-hmm. So, so, yeah, it was very uh, uh, un- unruly mm-hmm. in, in that sense. And at the same time, incredibly beautiful and poetic, and you know that are Japan is full of um, full of interesting. I would say it, it's full of these characteristics, these cultural points that you cannot confuse with anywhere else. They are really unique to Japan. Yeah. And yeah. Which makes me incredibly curious to go there. Mm-hmm. You know, now I want to go and did I tell you about my my yeah, yeah, you yeah, told me that you yeah, want to that hike I, that I want to hike and and, and learn to kitchens. cook. Yeah. Right, yeah, and learn to cook because uh, <clears throat> it it seems to me that it would be uh, that the cultural the the visual the sensorial shock, not just talking about cultural shock, mm-hmm. but at the same time there is a sensorial overload because. The, the the there is a word for the combination of all the colors that you are seeing at the same time it's different you know when you different. go it's different okay. um, the colors the combination of the colors it's not like red there is red here you know it's yeah, not, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, the yeah, same yeah. color it's the combination of how they are being used mm-hmm. in daily life that is very different mm-hmm. um, the uh, uh, it's an it's islands as well so because it's islands, um, the geography and, and nature in general will have a few surprises. Mm-hmm. You know, like animals that, that are, they have different styles or, or even completely different a- animals. Mm-hmm. It's not like Australia or New Zealand that where they have fucking monsters and aliens there. Uh, but I want to go. <laughs> but in Japan, like even... It's 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 funny to say this, but when you look online, Google a picture of a Japanese chicken, the chicken looks Japanese. Oh, the really? chicken is more colorful. Okay. You know, look at a Japanese cat. It is different. You know, is like it? they they have cats that are fucking different, okay. and that's in nature. It's not because they groom their way. You mm-hmm. know, but the animals are different. Uh, 
So, so yeah, Google that. You are going to notice yeah. that wow, they have this fucking chicken is really more colorful, and you know, and you know the the chickens that we are used to to see are kind of plain and. And those ones. Now that I'm looking at, by the way, I'm looking at the camera, the the image, the feedback, and this thing behind me really looks like a funny dude. Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, oops! It's a it's a lamp with a what the hell? That's uh, a lava lamp. Yeah, it's yeah. a lava lamp. I was looking. What the fuck? There is a dildo behind me. That a, this is not a girl's apartment. Well. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> there's the death star over there <laughs> yeah 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 we can tell that you're a geek i can see star wars from here yes that is star trek yes that is a lot of sci-fi and Babylon 5 and stargate Jesus. what else what else you have there like that's the simpsons and Simpsons. Guy, big bang theory yeah yeah do, do you do you have doom doom uh doom. i think i june or doom june d-u-n-e yeah yes i do definitely uh okay he's officially a geek then. yeah and yeah. it's and the, the <laughs> you know when i moved back uh -huh. i did something i wanted to do from the first day when i moved in here the first time uh -huh. i ordered my entire dvd and blu-ray collection by alphabet Oh, you order it. Okay. I order it. The problem uh, is my shelters are full now. I cannot uh -huh. buy anything. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yeah, that's that's so that's so funny. Yeah, like, and you have like James, the entire James Bond collection. Yeah, I'll put some photos. And uh, here, uh, Back to the Future. Mm -hmm. That's like the classic. Yes, it is. Yes. You know it, don't you? Yes, yeah, I watch it. I watch it all. Okay. Right. Yeah. No, but I like like oh when I was when I was a student, I got a lot of movies from somewhere. They came, they were falling down from a truck. Do you know mm. this expression? Yeah, yeah, like that. yeah. A lot of things fall from the truck. Yes, in exactly. And those movies yeah. somehow appeared at my computer. Ah. So um, I said, okay, I'm a student. You know, I have really not a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I do that as long as I don't have any. Mm -hmm. But once I earn money, I'm gonna buy all my, all the movies, mm -hmm. like not from a truck, but from mm -hmm. a shop. So, mm -hmm. so and then I started buying all the movies, and I have mm -hmm. hundreds of DVDs. It, it was it was cool. How recently I saw, uh, I discovered a comedian. His name is uh, Doug Stanhope. In 2014, I, I started listening to him, mm -hmm. and I totally love his material. And and then it's and then gradually I started to buy his videos. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't have to, but it felt like, well, you know, I really like it. I want the copy in high resolution, and maybe one day I'll, I'll meet him. Mm -hmm. You know, and and I I want to feel like, oh man, I gave you money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, I, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy, I enjoy uh, being a comedian. Strangely, I don't care as much for music. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know why. I have no logical standpoint on this. Um, why is it that I want to pay a comedian and that I don't want to pay for music? Allegedly. Allegedly. Everything we talk about here is just theoretical. There are, yes, yes, it's, it's never it's, reality, right? No. Um, yeah, but so, so why is it that I like to pay for some things and not for other kinds of expression? You know, like music. Maybe it's, um, it's, it's the same with the traveling. Maybe uh, it's what is like important for you. Yeah. Like the traveling, once you make a decision, you you yeah. pay kind of. You change your life. You you adapt your life to the traveling, yeah. and then. With a, with a comedian, it was important for you, yeah. so you did it. And yeah. music is just not so important, so you. Yeah, it's, uh, certain kinds of uh, <clears throat> of art are took me a long time to mm -hmm. to appreciate. Like painting, I only start to to really like it when I went to Amsterdam and I saw Monet. Mm -hmm. in, in the, uh, I didn't see Monet; I saw his painting. Right? 
uh, and, I then, and, then later, <laughs> and then later and then later uh i discover very recently i saw this documentary called uh, james vermeer in which this guy in in texas he figures out how vermeer used to paint with a, a photographic quality okay um and he figured it out and to prove that his the method works he painted a vermeer he he made a, a not a replica because he wasn't copying from the print the only uh, that that scene which is called the music teacher or something like that um the original is at the buckingham palace mm -hmm. and like a lot of things in england it's not for normal people to look at um, Uh, so th there is no access. He, he got access for like 30 minutes mm -hmm. to see it. But he using records and, and other images and, and, and prints, he built a replica of Vermeer's studio okay. in Texas, in, in a warehouse in Texas. The replica was perfect down to the details in the furniture, the light, the position, you know, in relation to the to the to the sky and everything, and so he had the same environment, mm -hmm. and then he put together his optical device that he used, and he painted a Vermeer. It took him like I don't remember six months, something like that. Mm -hmm. It was incredibly tough work, but then he invited experts that there are experts in Vermeer, and they look at it every day. Like, very impressed. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a fantastic documentary that I recommend, and I'll put a, a link on the on the podcast. So I only discover, really discover that I like a print like this, this lately. Um, uh, plays like theater, mm -hmm. uh, Broadway shows. My ex-wife dragged me to a few of them. <laughs> they were okay. They're not bad. Yeah. No, they are good, but to, you know, I don't think I would go to watch a play if my hair was on fire and they were giving away water during the play. It's not Never. easy to convince me. Uh, I, I went on the... The entire idea gets me bored. Oh? Huh? Yeah, really? the entire idea. I saw... I saw a few. Um, but again, it was the, the XY factor. <laughs> What, what I like is like I like funny things you know the magicians you know like mm -hmm. uh, like Penn and Teller are incredible it's uh, you learn you you, f you you it's not that you learn things you are watching things that you know cannot happen mm -hmm. you know and but you are you are there with your uh, you're not trying to believe it you are trying to not believe it yeah, right. you try and find trying, out what, what did exactly, they do. and they yeah. are still fooling you. You yeah, know, right? right. I, I think that there is so much technique, so much knowledge mm -hmm. behind that that I admire that the art of magic and and comedy became important in my life because it's the most complex expression of uh, of a language along with poetry and good songwriting mm -hmm. not all songwriting okay like Under any any Beyonce <laughs> and you know and some of these pop <laughs> stars today yeah, i yeah, could yeah, write yeah. better shit yeah. than that you know my, like my, my best example is always yeah. under my umbrella lady gaga yeah uh, lady gaga was it lady gaga yeah. was no no i don't no. remember but, but but Lady Gaga is a good example. I, uh, I I was thinking, Jesus, that that's so retarded, you know. Like a thirteen year old can write those songs. She probably wrote those songs when she was thirteen, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then later just play them. It, it's it's pathetic. Now read almost anything that uh, any any lyrics by Elton John or Queen. Or Pink Floyd, you know, or or Led Zeppelin, 
you know, not just it's incredibly difficult to write that kind of thing. You need to take the right drugs to help. <laughs> you know, it, it's not okay. even <laughs> simple to do that sober. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, it, it's it's great stuff. And when you're writing comedy, the level of difficulty is incredible. Mm. Just coming up with anything new that is not just circumstantial, it's not just what is happening that week, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, in the news. Uh, if you want to create something that has its own line of thought and style, it's as difficult as poetry. Yeah, I can, yeah, yeah. I highly yeah. agree. So I love it. I, and I, I would, and I, I did already a few times, uh, pay to watch someone just tell some jokes mm -hmm. and and to me it's very um, not uh, counterintuitive because it sounds like something that doesn't have that much value it's just a bunch of jokes mm -hmm. but writing them yeah getting the punchline so yeah, yeah everything correct yeah. and some guys are developing it to the point that they don't even use regular punch lines anymore. Like, uh, like Louis C.K. He, 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 he developed the delivery of of telling stories to a level that is so high, that is so sophisticated, that even the re the usual structure of jokes of preparing you and bringing mm -hmm. you up and dropping a punchline on you, even that is 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 absent. And he can still make the entire show be amazing, mm -hmm. you know. So I love that kind of art very much. Yeah, well, actually, next year I have an appointment in Singapore to go to a comedy show. Because I was in in Singapore, the, the entire story was I met a girl in New Zealand. I was traveling with her, mm -hmm. like, and a lot of other other people, and then. Two months later, something like that, or one and a half months later, I came to Singapore, uh -huh. and so I texted her and I met up with her, uh -huh. and then there was also her friend, and I was staying with a former car shop of mine, uh -huh. but that was Chinese New Year, they were Chinese, uh -huh. so they had to visit the family, and I couldn't stay any longer. Uh -huh. So this friend of the girl offered me to stay with her, Sharon, <coughs> and I couch of her and like. It always is with couch surfing. You get into yeah. the daily life, the daily routine of your host. And she showed me this amazing comedian. And we were laughing like crazy. Do you remember the name? It's Peters, something Russell Peters. Russell Peters? Russell Peters, yes. I, I think he is one of the best. He, 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 Hilarious. I, I, he's another guy that he found his niche. Yeah. He found his style. Yeah. And it's only him. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it's totally about interna it's so international. It is. It's it about is. the different cultures and the different ethnicities. It is. He's incredibly and, funny. And my friend, like like this this girl yeah. I stay with, my friend, she's uh -huh. Indian. Uh -huh. So so oh, and he's it. he's making so much fun about Indian and uh -huh. she's like, Oh, it's like at home, it's like at home. <laughs> like okay. <laughs> so Yeah. Yeah. I, I promise her next year I'm gonna fly back to Singapore. <laughs> and watch the show with her. Wow! It's a uh, it's it's gonna be you know when I when I'm anyway on the way to to Asia I don't uh -huh. know for a holiday so I could stop by for a few days in Singapore. Singapore uh -huh. has a big airport so yeah, you know the entire world is getting smaller once you are traveling around. So, That's true. That's yeah. true. If you have if you have enough money to buy a ticket and and you have a passport that doesn't suck too much. Then, then yeah. you'll be fine. You'll be yeah. fine. Um, but even people that have um, uh, passports that I would say they are not like super, but they're still okay. They, they travel. They go out. Yeah. You yeah. know, like uh, my friends in Ukraine. Yeah, it's tough for them to to come to Europe because they they don't always get a visa. America is difficult and all that. But it makes me helps me realize that America and Europe are not the entire world. There is so much more to go. True, true. And, and they and they do. They really do. A, a lot of my friends travel a lot. Um, but but yes, if you have right now a passport from Syria or Iraq yeah. or 
you know that there are some countries that you are stuck mm. you cannot go anywhere you can't go back to your own country it's a mess mm. um, so we are fortunate on that we are we are yeah. so often i think about it that like a lot of problems i have are mm. first world problems yeah that's that's actually one point when i came back i realized i i came back and i i thought like the people are complaining so much uh-huh. why are they complaining i mean it's a it's a german attitude to be fair uh-huh. like we germans tend to complain too much but i thought about a lot of people don't even appreciate what they have it's like oh my car is not as fast as this car <coughs> And they are not even happy that they have a car. Or and, and I think that that uh, Germans are uh, to me because every every different language or every different country uh, we tend to perceive it in a certain way. So, for example, uh, Russian sounds harsh. It sounds yeah. like a, a tough language, exactly, yeah. even when they are not saying things that are tough at all. You know, mm-hmm. they're they can be laughing and telling jokes and it still sounds pretty harsh if you don't understand it. Uh, like the the German, and... <laughs> German sounds... Uh, um, like sometimes you guys are talking about the, the time to take the train and it sounds like you are giving instructions to invade Poland. You know? it's, very, <laughs> it's, it's very... It's very... And Brazilians, they sound like they are trying to seduce you all the time. You know, like so... Uh, 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 there is there are these differences in in perception because of the style of the language, mm-hmm. but then there are you know the body language is different and the certain attitudes give you also a general impression about how people live, mm-hmm. and the that impression about Germans that I have is that they are melancholic. Uh, I have, and I know that it may have no connection to reality. Okay. Just like the language yeah. may not have a, a, a connection. Uh, That's interesting. But it yeah. looks melancholic because it's like everybody is working harder than usually you see. And that is, uh, uh, everything is more organized and on time. And, you know, but at the same time, there is a certain... I don't know. It's on the way you guys talk and mm-hmm. on the way you, 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 you look at your own possibilities. To me, it's, it's it sounds like, why why are you sad? You know, like you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that, that is Why true. are you so depressed? Like Germans <laughs> yeah. tend to not live the life. It's yeah. like, oh, like oh, and, and you guys don't show your money and you don't party that much and yeah, you know the true. sense of humor is much more subtle, to say the best. Um, a lot of people say that you guys don't have any sense of humor, um, especially your neighbors. Yeah, your yeah. Neighbors I, I absolutely say that. That's everywhere yeah. in the world. I yeah. was traveling Asia, and people yeah. told me you're from Germany. You don't have a sense yeah. of humor. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> and and, and oh, that's it. yeah, and, and you do. And, and actually, when I when I come to to German speaking countries, uh, I, I make fun of it, you know. But uh, my friends, they. They seem to like it or at least tolerate that. They keep inviting me to come back, so I guess they are like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I have no problem making fun of it. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, I, I believe the sense of humor and all these same values and mechanisms that everybody ha- else have, they are there. It's mm-hmm. just this uh, veneer of sadness, mm-hmm. of being quiet or timid um i don't know it's hard to, yeah. to say um just just like uh you know uh, every country has that and it's part it's the language you know i, I would i would like to tell you two th- things mm-hmm. one story about the humor is mm-hmm. um that I was in, in the United States traveling in Boston and I met this girl and she was really, really nice. Showed me around mm-hmm. at the colleges there. And I was mm-hmm. at Harvard and uh, the NTU, NTU, Massachusetts. MIT. Uh, MIT, MIT, yeah. yeah. And uh, so at some point she was like, okay, so you're a German. You don't have any sense of humor. I'm like, no, that that's a drive. <laughs> we can be hilarious. And she's like, 
Like this. Okay, make me laugh. Uh. <laughs> and they're sitting there being like, that's not huh? helpful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's like when I say that I learn in Russian and people say, okay, say what you know in Russian. Yeah. Like, fuck you, I don't know. You know, when the situation comes, I say it. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? But I, I cannot put everything in line. Now, now imagine if I say, okay, tell me what you know in German. You know? Just choosing just, what to say first is difficult, right? Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> now, imagine if you don't know the language that well. Uh, but no, uh, yeah. Uh, some people, they... they, they it, it's like they test you. Or when you tell... This happens a lot. Happens a lot in, in Ukraine. You tell that you, are, that you speak some Russian... Mm-hmm. And then they switch to Russian and keep talking to you in Russian. Uh, like, and now you are getting like 30% of it, right? Yeah. But the problem is that you are understanding 30% and you can answer zero, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and because they go to normal speed and say, no, you know, that's not the way that you learn. Or they say, no, you say something and I'll tell you how to say in Russian. Well, it was, if it was just like that, I wouldn't go to fucking school. You know, mm-hmm. I wouldn't learn. I wouldn't buy a book. You know, that's not the way you learn. Yeah, true. You know, yeah. Uh, you you need a, a method and you follow that. And at some point, you can start, we can gradually mix that with the real situations. And, you know, so I, I find it quite uncomfortable. And one day there was a party where my friends, out of, out of absolutely good intentions, are, are not criticizing that uh, with very good intentions but it was a big party in a in a house and most people were ukraine mm-hmm. and some russians and they were the the language in general was was russian but and i was talking to some people in english mm-hmm. uh some that knew some english they they were and i had there was a group there was really a group like next to me and we were all talking English and then the host came up and kept talking in Russian to me mm-hmm. you know and 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 help and I would try to respond and he would say to me how how to say that in Russian well while he was doing that everybody walked away because it was so uncomfortable now mm-hmm. you know and I told him you see man you know like you stop the party you know <laughs> this is not a class it's a yeah, party yeah, let's, yeah, yeah, let's yeah. have a beer and <laughs> just just enjoy it um that's the right time to, yeah yeah true. Peop, yeah people tend to to to, to uh, and they're trying to be helpful yeah you true. know that I, i'm not criticizing that at all uh it just <laughs> it just didn't work like that yeah and in, in, in the break uh you reminded mm-hmm. me of something because i mm-hmm. i told you two days ago that i uh, would like to ask you about your time in ukraine because over here in the media you get a very a colored picture like you know not like not necessarily the, the truth about what's going on in the ukraine mm. basically what what i hear from the media is that like uh, like russia came to the crime which was part of the ukraine then they started fighting even though it was not officially the russians and uh, then the European Union started the sanctions against the Russians, but the, but the entire Ukraine is kind of messed up. So that's what that's what uh, media tells more or less over here. The people yeah. already, a lot of people are already asking questions like, is that mm-hmm. the entire truth? Um, because there were problems that there's like very one-sided, like pro-America and con- like yeah. against Russia. Uh, so what is your every no experience? every country has biases and in a in a certain tendency for disinformation and and bad media, but they do that in different styles, mm-hmm. um, in, and and also they have different levels of access to variety of information. So in America, we have a media that is fully owned by the established establishment politicians Mm -hmm. so the entire media has uh, a bias that is so evident that is horrible but in america at least the internet is very common 
it's very accessible. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, social media is very pervasive in, in the country. So you get some different points of view, and and if you are interested, in, you know, it, it doesn't hit you automatically. But if you are interested in learning more, or if you are um, disciplined to ignore regular media, it's mm -hmm. very possible there. Yeah. Uh, in Russia, internet is is uh, elite thing. Very few people have it. That's simply because it's expensive, mm -hmm. and it's in, in, and it's unpopular. So the percentage of people that make up their opinions based only on on the newspaper and the, and TV is is very high, mm -hmm. and and it's as distorted as you can imagine. Okay, like the the me the, the Russian media is pure propaganda. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that the the American media is not pure propaganda. It's half propaganda. The other half is bullshit. <laughs> you know, but it's not bullshit that is organized with a certain purpose. Yeah. Okay. You know, oh, we have the purpose of pushing this agenda. No, it's whatever is more entertaining. Yeah. You know, so you can open CNN any day, and there will be like. One third of the first pages is about, you know, uh, the uh, pills to grow your dick and, and shark attacks and, you know, some other bullshit that doesn't matter in your life, you know. Mm -hmm. It's stuff that has no consequence. So there is a lot of this time wasting and then that is, that is propaganda. In, but Russian media, uh, the very little that, that I saw is, is all propaganda. And also it's one of those countries where where outside websites and outside media are heavily filtered, you know, okay. like China. Mm -hmm. uh, so in some countries, uh, I would say the the view that the population in general can possibly have is very distorted. And several times already, uh, talking to Russians that that they moved in, or they had to move. And I have friends that they cannot go to, to, to Russia. They'll get arrested the day that they get back. Mm -hmm. um, and so they develop a very different view. They change a lot once they leave. Because they see that, wow, you know, I was being fed bullshit all the time. Uh, and, and Europe has its own flavors of, of bullshit. But because the continent is so fragmented, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's very difficult to for a certain ideology or certain point of view to dominate over the entire continent mm -hmm. you know also europe has older democracies for mm -hmm. for good or bad you know sometimes that is a big disadvantage as well but at least you know if someone comes up with a crazy idea really crazy idea in one of the european countries the others tend to resist it even if it's simply for the fact that it comes from another country, you know, <laughs> it's like as if it is as if, you know, like a guy like Trump came yeah. up, it was incredibly popular in New York, but the people in Texas just went like, ah, pfft, I don't care, mm -hmm. it's not from Texas, mm -hmm. you know. So we are not that isolationist in in, in America, mm -hmm. but in in Europe you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it's a lot of bullshit. Now, what happened there? Yeah, what happened is is is. In general, it's a simple idea of what happened since 2012. Uh, 2012, 2014, uh, with Euromaidan, and then right. uh, they invaded uh, uh, Crimea. And, and there is no better word for that. Yeah, they invaded and they took it. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, however, <laughs> I watched the, the speech that Putin gave at the UN uh, and let me make it very clear I think that Putin is the second biggest asshole in the world today okay the, the first is Trump but the <laughs> I think that the second craziest most marginally smart uh, in the sense in the sense of good smarts um, I think Putin is a horrible case. But he said a bunch of things that were true. Mm -hmm. You know, and once when an idiot says the truth, it doesn't make it a lie. You mm -hmm. know? 
and and in fact he he mentioned that that America ex during the the Bush years America extended its influence much further than it used to be and, and it went more. all the way to exactly the borders of Russia yeah. and much and further than actually agreed much, in 1990 yeah, exactly so that is a that is an expansion of influence of American influence mm -hmm. over Eastern Europe. That's evident, mm -hmm. and and Russia is re is responding to that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe the response is inadequate. I think it's 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 in the, the wrong direction, but but then saying like they say in, uh, of most Americans, they tend to think that that whatever America has been doing over in Europe doesn't have any influence on that or doesn't provoke things as well, that's quite naive. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah, sure. That's quite naive. And, and I know that my, my opinion is not very popular. But so in America. In America, yeah. Because I believe America suffers from... Uh, America has amazing things. It's, it's an amazing country in many ways. It's exciting. It's interesting. It's a rich country. So rich that we can waste money the way we do and we still don't run out of it you know uh <laughs> but but it's a very rich country i love the freedoms we used to have you know it, it's it's amazing but uh, uh america is is overtaken by a very dangerous religion and that's the religion of american exceptionalism the idea that we are special okay. you know and the country would be better if we didn't have that crazy fucking idea. It's a very sinister form of nationalism. Mm -hmm. you know? Because nationalism, pure and simple, is just the idea that somehow our country is better. Mm -hmm. The American exceptionalism even brings religion into it. You know, Like America invented American Christianism. You know, created, you know, like heaven yeah. is in Missouri. You know, and they believe that, uh, a, a lot of people there believe that America has a, a, a special meaning religiously as well. Mm -hmm. all, all those things are fucking crazy, you know. And, and the idea, of, if, you, if you believe that your country is better or that other people are collectively not knowing what is better for them, that makes it easier to agree to invade another country, to kill people that you don't know. Uh, makes it easier to consider, uh, to think of people by the numbers and not as people. You know, it's the same mentality that makes it easier to, to look at animals like products. Mm -hmm. You know, that just associate yourself from from the world around you, and and America is loaded with that. Yeah, I. I had a really interesting conversation with a guy, with an American guy in Korea. Um, it was about exactly that point about religion mm -hmm. in, in America. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing was, this guy, first of all, he was crazy as fuck. He <laughs> was, he was, but such a cool craziness. Like everybody yeah. laughed in the, in, 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 the, in the hustle. He was really a great guy. And... But it was his very first time outside the United States. Uh -huh. The very first time. And he came to Korea. Uh -huh. And I met him on his first day. And mm -hmm. then, you know, I kept on traveling. And he kept on staying at the same place. And at the end, mm -hmm. we met again. Mm -hmm. And he shared with me okay. all his, all his like, n new exciting things he mm -hmm. experienced. And uh, we had once this, co this discussion or conversation about... Americans and the religion mm -hmm. and then I figured out a really interesting difference between not I can't say Europe I mm -hmm. have to say Germany mm -hmm. Germany and the United States in Germany you get educated religion in school you have a subject mm -hmm. at school which is called religion mm -hmm. in the United States it's basically you get religion educated by the church mm -hmm. right and um, I think the interesting fact is that in Germany, at least, um, we get educated about not just Christianity, 
Christianity. Mm -hmm. It's also like Buddhism, about mm -hmm. uh, Hinduism, about Islam, mm -hmm. yeah. Judaism. So you get a, a, an idea of what are all those different religions stand about. Mm -hmm. And actually that all those religions like have a good point and it is a religion mm -hmm. and like it is you can something believe in a, re a religion is 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 a way of uh of, of personal expression it's like music yeah you know? that's a good point yeah, and just really like music point. it's it is full of allegory and mysticism and and, mm -hmm. and 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 symbols that you can't take completely completely uh, literally just like you you don't take music literally yes exactly. you know uh yeah. You know, uh, Bob Marley, he, he didn't actually shoot the sheriff, you know. It, 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 it's not literal. <laughs> That's a really, really good metaphor. Yeah, you know, true. It's not literal. Yeah. It, it's, it's part of the song. It's part of the way that you express an idea. Yeah, exactly. And, and the same with, with religion. When you talk to people that have very sophisticated and well-developed understanding of both Western and, and Eastern religions, and they can cut through the bullshit in both directions you will notice that they they are capable of appreciating uh, mi the mystical and appreciating the the, the 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 ritualistic and all that in the in the different religions and they can even participate on that without the faith and without the dogma mm -hmm. and yeah. without being in that religion mm -hmm. um, so there is no conflict there but the way that a lot of people look at religion in America is fucking insane. Um, and I, I heard an English guy say something in a way similar about religion in England. He said that over there it's not nearly as bad because in England they have their official religion mm -hmm. that is pushing everybody. So they don't take it seriously. Okay. You know, in America, we have a variety, I mean, the most amazing variety and freedom of mm -hmm. religion. Yeah. But then because it's something voluntary and it's, and, and when you go, everybody that is taking it seriously, the, the, the uh, reverb, the reverb chamber effect, you know, the, when everybody reflects the same values back and forth, it keeps reinforcing it. You know, mm -hmm. so the the fervor, the intensity of the their connection to their church is much more intense than it is in Europe. Mm -hmm. In Europe, people barely mention it. Mm -hmm. You know, like I was, I was in Ukraine, mm -hmm. and Ukraine has more churches than any place that I have been before, and nobody bothers you for that. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's there, but they don't even mention. They don't talk about it. They don't ask what is your, mm. what is your faith mm. or you know, uh, it, it's it's like they are used to the idea and and definitely you don't see them voting with it. Yeah, you know, I have <laughs> so I, it's I, it's comfortable. Yeah, it's um, <clears throat> I met like because you say like, like you don't mm. you don't feel it or, or nobody's mm. uh, bothering it with you. Mm. Um. I was in, in Taipei and I met a American girl at my hostel mm -hmm. and we ended up like having getting lunch together and we talked mm -hmm. and we had also this similar topic about Americans mm -hmm. and faith and then I mentioned that it is for me being from Germany unusual that the president has to like, uh, swear in on, on the Bible and say in God or, or you say in yeah. God we trust or it's on the no, on the bill, yeah right? so help me God that's so the help me phrase God. of the pledge right. yeah so and then and then we had this and she agreed so like it's only now we mention it it's mm -hmm. really really why, why is that and then in the end uh -huh. like we just met for a day or, or two days not not mm -hmm. too long and in the end she said ah oh, and goodbye and may God bless you mm -hmm. and I was laughing and I said ah oh, you, you you did this on purpose right and she's mm -hmm. like no, I didn't. <laughs> and then, no, and then I was yeah. like, oh, "Okay, it's so yeah. deep inside her." It's like, yeah, well, you know, it's like you know when you when you sneeze and people say "God bless you," even when they are not religious, you know. Yeah. But but that all that doesn't bother me at all because it's a pure expression of of friendliness, you know, of being friendly, or wishing you well. The problem is when they 
they do politics of that. When they choose how to vote, they choose who to support, you mm -hmm. know, based on what the priest said. Mm -hmm. uh, or when uh, public policy is defined, decided based on religious values, mm -hmm. then all kind of shit happens. You know, in America we have the education system is not the basic education is not that is not great, but in some things it's horrible. You know, sex education in America is a disaster. You know, it's it's it's, it's a calamity. All right, it it, it causes the way it's done uh, over there is wor is much worse than not doing it at all. Okay, because it's based on very conservative policies that are insane. No sex in, uh, before no, marriage. No, it's or... it's associating, it's teaching kids to associate sex with with pain, with with danger, you know, with disease and 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 uh, uh, telling them to 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 avoid it and you know and all that and, and stuff that is completely unrealistic and it has been measured over and over that the result is bad. That kids, they they end up having sex anyway, but they are much less educated about it. They are much less about uh, educated about have, wearing protection. Yeah. Uh, much less educated about dealing with the consequences and choices, and so it's crazy. We have a very immature system, mm -hmm. you know, and which which connects in their mind, connects sex with danger okay. instead of connecting taking bad decisions irresponsible decisions with danger because that's where the danger actually is mm -hmm. sex is part of life it's part of you know uh, 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 it's 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 a good thing that is part of their development as kids anyway mm -hmm. right uh, people listen to this they are going to think I care about the kids but <laughs> not that much <laughs> Not that much, uh, but but but, uh, but uh, you know, uh, I I don't care too much about a lot of things, but I I can tell yeah. that you know friendship is better than hostility. Yeah. You know, education is better than ignorance. Mm -hmm. There are some things that are just simply better. Yeah. You know, tolerance is better than than intolerant you know um, equality is better than uh, than discrimination and you know so some there are there are some values like that and when I look at the way uh, sex education happens in America I think what a fucking disaster it could be better mm -hmm. you know it could be something much more rational and mm -hmm. and productive and that would you know help a, a lot of kids avoid uh, unnecessary suffering mm -hmm. you know so in that sense i am sensitive to it that i that i, I see things being done very very bad yeah. uh, uh europeans by any way that you measure are doing better than than americans in that exactly. by any way that you can measure well i and i have to admit my parents did a very good job on that like when i was when i was young they forced me on uh, like pulling condoms over bananas or uh, uh, a stick of a broom so because they said and, and then my mom even my mom gave me condoms to practice in my room she said but, yeah. like once it is you need it you have to know how to use it so practice so, it so by it yourself. doesn't break your mood too much or yeah like or, uh, yeah. you use it at all yeah. and then the next point was she said I cannot stop you from having sex. Mm -hmm. So, if you need condoms and you, you are too shy to mm -hmm. ask in the shopper, then ask me. I give you condoms. Mm -hmm. Because you're mm -hmm. gonna have sex anyway. Yeah. But then do it responsible we, and with yeah. protection. Which is a lot better than the way they have trying to do in America. Yeah. In general. But, uh, and also that is a, a great opportunity lost there because and I'm talking about both America and Europe on this mm -hmm. uh, because sexual education is mostly about reproductive sex mm -hmm. but reproductive sex is what we do 
in average, in a one of every thousand times, sex results in reproduction. The average <laughs> is something around one to one thousand. Okay. In in, in the West, uh, that means the other ninety one hundred ninety nine times, uh, hopefully, it was done for pleasure. Sex is not about reproduction. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of the time, sex is about connection. And, and the kids come up to their teenage years knowing absolutely nothing about it. Mm-hmm. You know, they know nothing about connection. They know nothing about consent. They know nothing about uh, the difference between dominance and violence. They don't know the difference between being assertive and being an asshole. You know, they don't know uh, uh, about how uh, sex is going to affect the way they feel about other people. How it's going to affect their social life as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have no clue about the consequences of what they do online. You know, so that are that is so much more that they should learn about sex mm-hmm. before they are given a supercomputer to carry on their pocket. Mm-hmm. That's true. You know, yeah, responsibility. We, uh, for the yeah, own Americans data. are totally willing to give a fifteen-year-old a supercomputer and a car. No, the car is a little bit later in Germany, but yes. Yeah, it's in some good. states it's 15, okay. other states it's 16. In Germany it's uh, 18. Yeah. yeah. So, that. so they are okay with giving something that is uh, access to all the porn in the world and all the bad information and all the craziness, all, all the good things too, but you know, mm-hmm. usually people are going to search for the crazy shit first. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and a little weapon, which is a car, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so no wonder, no wonder we have, you know, a record number of uh, kids with diseases, a record number of uh, unwanted pregnancies, uh, a record number of kids that are kicked out of the house because they got pregnant, and so now they're okay. homeless. The number of girls that are homeless because they got kicked out either because they are gay or because they are gay really? oh yeah it's very common I thought kids the American society is very open kids, with that. kids came uh, I would say one third of American society is very open only one third and but about one third people. and about one third or so is medieval mm-hmm. you know so it's, it's the numbers over there are horrible you know, of, of, of kids that come out as gay and they are kicked out of the house, you know, and they end up in shelters or they end up as nomads. You know, when you walk, do like me, walk across America yeah. and you're going to see how many nomads you see. Okay. You know, it's staggering. It's mm-hmm. staggering. It's kids from very religious families that cannot tolerate the disaster. That is the result of the sexual education that they gave. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, so there is a lot of a lot of uh, confusion mm-hmm. with that, and, and I don't see uh, you see problems here as well, but it's not nearly as bad mm-hmm. in, in that department. Okay. You know, especially way like in the West, like in France, Netherlands, people are very mature about it. I'm talking about the adults. Mm-hmm. The adults are very mature, very realistic, you know. And usually, that doesn't get on the way with them. I want to share a story from my grandmother. My mm-hmm. grandmother was seventy mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. She was sitting there, and there was me, and some bunch of others from my family. I, my mm-hmm. sister was there, I think, mm-hmm. like the grandchild, mm-hmm. and this, and she said like the three. Best adventures in the li- uh, uh, adventures, uh, uh-huh. invitation and uh, inventions. Now I got it. Inventions. The best Im- three best inventions in the last century uh-huh. was I don't know, uh, the washing machine, uh-huh. something I forgot, I, uh-huh. I can't remember, and the birth control pill. Oh, yeah. And she said, like, we wanted so badly, yeah, but we couldn't do anything yeah. because also, uh, we can't that, get, get pregnant. Yeah. That is, is a it? that is a scientist called Hans Rosling. 
he you can find him easily on tab.com uh he he dedicated one entire talk about the washing machine he said that's the most predictable way to measure if women are emancipated in a society or not they have washing machines because when you look at uh, very primitive places places like we think <coughs> of africa you know uh, very often uh, women spend about half of the time carrying water and washing clothes Mm -hmm. You know, the moment that she has a wash access to a washing machine, that means that is indoor plumbing in the house, that is electricity, right? Mm -hmm. And now she has time. Mm -hmm. She finally has time, because the uh, gender equality comes a lot later than that. Okay. You know, for most societies, but that's really the dividing point when a woman goes from having almost no time of being a a, a workhorse to having time to do whatever it is mm -hmm. you know studying or doing nothing uh, uh, in in another there was another talk I don't remember if it was him or someone else that that was saying that the most trusted predictor of any society uh, getting out of poverty, getting out of the below so many dollars a year and and having basic services is when women have control over the reproductive life. Mm -hmm. So for as long as men can decide when they have kids and usually they end up having many, they live in, in huts. Okay. You know? But it's <coughs> it's when women have the power to take that decision and usually that happens because they also have some education yeah. then the number of kids drops mm -hmm. and then they, they step out of poverty it's the most most uh, uh, trusted number for that mm -hmm. um, which is very interesting again we end up with the same old equation it takes education it takes education. You know, it takes some equality. It takes rule of law. That's Before you have that, everything is caves. Everybody's in caves. Not necessarily caves, but <laughs> yeah, you are, you're right. Like through all those countries I traveled within mm -hmm. the last year, I found out, in the, uh, I experienced mm -hmm. by myself, in those countries where they have proper education, people live that, I don't know, Live, live, not as happier, but very, very better, very, very more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And that's like a chicken egg problem. What mm -hmm. comes first, the education or the living better? So somehow it is connected, but yeah. I couldn't tell which which one comes. Well, first. We are not talking about complex education. You know, it's 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 very basic stuff. You know, and and very basic education people get, but it doesn't help. If you go there with an NGO and give her a sewing machine and, you know, and a hundred bucks mm. and you feel very good about yourself and then, and then you leave, you know, you white people, you leave mm. and the neighbor goes there, beats her up and takes all the stuff away. Mm. Cause we don't, we do, a lot of people are not aware that in a lot of these countries, a lot of these very underdeveloped places, usually there is someone. You know, in, when there is lack of rule of law, that is someone that just goes and takes stuff from everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, and, 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 and so nothing grows, nothing stays, you know, yeah. in, in, in that society. So, yeah, you, it's... You, you connect it to law. I, I mm -hmm. would still connect it somehow with education. Because when, um, like, example, in, in Vietnam, I had mm -hmm. a, a, a very good friend, a really nice girl, and I liked her a lot and she like we were walking together around and then in Vietnam everybody who starts talking to you wants to sell something to you yeah. and then there are so many kids selling so much something. hustling yeah. and then yeah so much it's, it's very irritating <laughs> it is so I, I sometimes had a really hard tough time there but then the kids came and um, I always asked her no told like asked her to ask 
this kid if this kid visits our school? And a hundred percent of the answers was always no. Mm -hmm. So I think it is it is not necessarily the, 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 the law enforcement, but it's also the 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 knowledge of the mm -hmm. like how important the education is. The more right. education yeah, people in general have. Yeah, it's higher. all that, you know, like you have to have some education. You have to have some expectation that people are not going to just walk into your house and take your stuff. Mm. You know, like like it is the norm in a lot of the world. Mm. You know, uh, there has to be an expectation of, uh, you know, respect for private property, respect for your privacy, um, and you have to have mobility. If you don't have mobility, you're a slave. I don't, I don't, I don't see anything, any connection more clear between slavery and, and, and people than the lack of mobility. If you cannot choose to leave your place, if you cannot choose to, to go somewhere else okay. for something, you're a slave. If you have a kid and your kid is sick and in that city over there, they have a hospital. But if you are not allowed by the local by the local whoever is the big dick in your village, if he does if he tells you that you cannot go, then you are a slave. No, I, okay, I okay. because yeah, it's, we... it's the same result. You cannot go where you want to go. Mm -hmm. You know? And that is the reality for one out of out of five people in the world today. They cannot just choose to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Not even walking. I'm not saying because they don't have the money. You can walk anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. But they cannot choose to do it. Yeah, you know? uh, well, we are right now, I think, talking about two different levels. Mm -hmm. I'm still talking about that you have this possibility of mm -hmm. mobility, yeah. but still the, the importance of education generally. Yeah, not, it is yeah. still important. Because yeah. Otherwise, you are, you know, you, it's, it's like sometimes you go to a, to a place, like, okay, like Vietnam, right? And you see a guy just being a, a bully and, you know, like, he's the, the security guy in a store or in a club, right? And in terms of education, in terms of what he knows, of what he can calculate, of how much he can predict the future and make choices based on that, he is effectively the same as a monkey in a suit. Because he cannot take any of those decisions. He's not used to think of the future. He's not used, used to simulate what will happen next in any way that he can make choices that will change anything. The only thing he knows how to do is he follows orders, right? The mm -hmm. owner of the club tells him to do something, it gets done. Okay. You know? And he can follow some very simple rules. Okay, if this happens, this is okay. If it doesn't happen, then this is okay. You know, but it cannot get complicated. Yeah. A lot of soldiers are like that. Yeah. A lot of soldiers. And I'm talking about soldiers from any country, you know, uh, exactly. including America. A and Germany. They are, <laughs> they are a lot of, you know, of, of course, like every generalization, there will be, and on purpose, I don't allow comments on the, on the videos, <laughs> because there will always be some asshole that will go there and say, yeah but there are some some exceptions to that i know there are exceptions i you know i'm not an imbecile i understand that for every group for every situation there will be a certain number of exceptions and the bigger the group and the longer the time the more exceptions you find right but in fact when you really look at the guys that are coming back from the war a lot of them are fucking monkeys with a uniform. It's guys that cannot think well. They they grew up, they went to a school, but they grew up with a, a, a view of the world that is so close, so limited. And and the options that they have for behavior is are, are so few that that they are they are hardly predictable. You yeah, know, and I noticed that in several countries, uh, e even even in America. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, the uh, a lot of a lot of veterans, and and I I'm a hasher too, so we drink beer and run. That is this running thing, 
that I talk about occasionally in the podcasts. And a significant number of the hashers are military. And it has been several already that I had to one friend, both on Facebook and in personal life, because their, their political view is so monolithic, it's so rigid, that and it's so whatever the government tells them, that there is no way to talk to the guys. It's like uh, there is no dialogue, there is no questioning. But there, you know? I might ask you a question. Did you talk to them in person or via Facebook? No, in person too. In person too. No, there were people that in person I had to say, you know, man, I appreciate what you do, but, you know, I cannot talk to okay. you about this. Be you know, why I say that is because I have a, a friend already for mm -hmm. 12 years, an mm -hmm. American guy, mm -hmm. and he's in the military. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he's like my brother. It's mm -hmm. like, I, I have an American family. I have an mm -hmm. American mother, I have an American father, I have an mm -hmm. American sister, and I have an yeah. American brother. And my American brother, he's in the military. And... Mm -hmm. Uh, he also like quite often um, posts things on Facebook. I disagree when I read it. Yeah. So what I did, not not always, uh, but w once or twice, I, did, I wrote a comment underneath this post. Mm -hmm. And then in this conversation underneath this post, we both agree on the same points. And the, the same points mm -hmm. are, actually, he knows that this, what he posted, is not necessarily the entire point. Like mm -hmm. it is, he wants to kind of wake up the people, mm -hmm. but he knows that that's not necessarily the mm -hmm. truth. So when I, since we talked about all those mm -hmm. things, I understand more why he does it. Yeah. And um, but, you know but, what I mean. But I know, and online is a lot worse. Online people are much more aggressive. Than they are in person, but even in person, a few times I already had to, 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 because I, I life's short. I really believe that I am on my last life, so I have to use it well. I cannot waste a lot of time, you know. And some guy starts yelling across the table. Why is it that? you know that this party does everything right and the other party does everything wrong by the time he finishes the first phrase i already got my beer and i left it, i don't waste time you know because that that is that is just not enough life to convince them one by one of things you know and uh, and, and that is not enough time to care about it uh, some people some people are incredibly closed and 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 not, and not and not just military like uh, some time ago um well on facebook i unfollow a lot of people right like i unfollow, just unfollow unfollow, unfollow. unfollow. i don't unfriend them because mm -hmm. sometimes there are a lot of people that in person they are kind of cool you know they are good to have a a beer with they are good good to you know go run with them or to ride the motorcycle motorcycle with them but but i don't want to be watching their political rants on online you know that it's a different thing and and if if someone unfollows me that means that they don't want to 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 see my craziness online as well yeah and you but have some crazy <laughs> because i bet i bet it, it, it has to happen in both directions you know huh. it would be completely delusional to think that everybody that is my friend keeps following me uh but but in some cases even in person it's impossible no, it's impossible to talk, and then you say, "Okay, man, you know, goodbye." Um, but isn't that isn't that a very egoistic point of view? I mean, uh, th then I, then my question would be uh -huh. to to rephrase it: What is your purpose in life? Ah, because the, we are back to the purpose thing. Remember, we were talking about it. Yeah. The other day, I really don't think there is any. I don't think there is any point, and I don't think it's necessary. Some people, they, they tend to jump into the conclusion, oh, but if there is no purpose, why leave? Well, it's fucking funny. It's great. I like to drink. I like to eat. I like to fuck. I like to travel. Isn't that <laughs> enough? What else do you need? 
you know so i think that having a purpose and sometimes people uh stumble upon the opportunity to even change the world around them and make really great things great so they should take the opportunity and use it yeah right occasionally i i see some some uh traces of it on the work that i do that is That's very cool exactly what i want to cool. say yeah. but even if i didn't do that work at all i wouldn't feel that my life is any less interesting or or worth living uh, i just don't don't feel any need to attach my story to a purpose okay okay you know? fair enough just just not necessary no purpose mm -hmm. I don't want to use but because you were talking about yeah. the but before. No, no you can. Um, it's just not to explain why it is that you don't travel. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you said there is no purpose. However, you do great things out of mm -hmm. no reason. Not a necessary to give your life a purpose. Mm -hmm. No, you do it out of your own kindness you want like this this, yeah, this and my, community and my, and my own do? curiosity too and your own yeah, curiosity. curiosity but you do some what what you do is to give something good to people yeah but uh, this this is interesting this this is uh, I, I i had a lot of time to ask myself this kind of questions and 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 to think through them i'm not saying that that if you that you shouldn't see a purpose on what you do you know i just think that sometimes the purpose is something that you write after the fact and that's what a lot of people do you know like like they say oh uh, everything happens for a reason no you gave the reason after it happened yeah first it happened and then you rewrote the reason it's like if you it's like if you take the bow and arrow and you shoot the arrow and you go there wherever it hit, and you paint the target around it. That's what people actually do. And then later they say, "See, yeah, the purpose was to hit right there." You know, I understand. You know, it's it's. I just and I'm not saying that some people will not be able to express purpose in beautiful ways. You know, they will, and that's cool. Yeah. I just don't think I need it. I mean, it, it, or or it's like. Um, uh, like I say, I, I like to use this uh, this exact phrase I said. There are some uh, when I'm talking about education, because I didn't go to college, mm -hmm. and and I say some people have to go to college. If nobody goes to college, the world kind of fades. You know, it's we are <laughs> back to Planet of the Apes kind of quick. Uh, so some people have to study engineering to keep the airplanes from falling. Some people need to become technicians to keep the train on time, right? Some people have to learn the, the techniques so they can be a surgeon, a doctor. It just doesn't need to be me. Uh, That's yeah, all no. that I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. doesn't need to be me. And whatever purpose it is, I don't need to have one. No, you know? it's, it's and, and, and that is very compatible with my Zen thing. Yes. You know, because in Zen you don't express it. At least you don't express that with logic, yeah. with any right. any logical language. But then just let's not use the word purpose. Mm -hmm. um, back, like uh, also mm -hmm. also like now we can connect multiple mm -hmm. points on, from a conversation right mm -hmm. now. Uh, religion, mm -hmm. purpose, mm -hmm. with, like uh, world mm -hmm. or, or whatever. It is all kind of like if you break it down to the to the smallest part, mm -hmm. isn't it about being a good person, being happy, like happiness, joy for yourself? Then mm -hmm. I say, okay, I have no purpose besides making myself happy, or mm -hmm. I live my life happy because my life is so short. So mm -hmm. it it ends up to in the end do something good do something good to myself do something good to others that's everybody uh, everybody's choice but in the end is do something good isn't it and then i heard i don't know that, I, that that's that's my true answer to that yeah i don't know i don't know if it matters and at the moment i'm not concerned you know if it does <laughs> maybe it does maybe that is maybe that is a dimension to it and by dimension i mean a meaning 
to it that is important that I'm going to recognize in the future. Mm -hmm. Just right now, it's beyond my horizon. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, my 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 view of things is, is being much simpler than this. You know, uh, because I was uh, thinking uh, about a lot of things in life and and trying to separate what is bullshit, what is not bullshit, what is necessary, mm -hmm. what is not necessary. And, and I end up with a list of things, a very short list of things that I believe that they matter mm -hmm. to me, mm -hmm. that they matter to me regardless of anything. And that list is very short. It's uh, f uh, family, mm -hmm. friends, love, the pursuit of happiness, beauty, and knowledge. That's it. Six items. Mm -hmm. I can write a tattoo for, uh, for that. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think there is anything else. Everything, everything else, if it doesn't fall into one of these, I can totally do without. You know, so politics, fuck it, I don't care. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. other as a religion, I don't care. I can totally go without it. Uh, 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 news, uh, uh, recent the things that happened recently, I don't care. Mm -hmm. I don't even look at the news mm -hmm. anymore. You know, the other day people asked me, uh, when I was doing El Camino, oh, you know, what about the Brexit? And I said, who is that? You know? <laughs> <laughs> who is it? <laughs> don't know the guy. Uh, I totally don't know about these things because my life goes completely undisturbed without knowing them. Yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. And for most people that are talking about it, it doesn't matter to them either. It has no material effect on their life other than keeping their stress level up. Or knowledge that's on your list yeah but right? knowledge yeah but make it a little more useful then you know i i raise the bar a little higher you know to me knowledge yeah. do you know what is knowledge that that to me matters is like to you matter to yes. me yeah please. because that is the only way that you can measure things is from your personal point of view exactly there is no yeah, yeah I there is no that. other way well, right so from my point of view you know, uh, I'm very curious to learn welding. I think it's going to be amazing to start thinking of metal, not as a fixed form, mm -hmm. but as something that you can mold. Mm -hmm. You know, the way that I think of wood today. You know, the, the time that epoxy came along, wood became something completely new. Okay. You know, so to me, the magic that you can do with wood, you can do with, with metal. Okay. But only if you know those things. I want to learn more about music i bought an ar ar harmonica and i'm having a good time playing with that music you know? okay so so Next there one. are things that i like to do uh and but that came also because i asked the following question mm -hmm. let's say you decide to paint a portrait yeah. and you spend a lot of time learning to do it and you do it and you finish that portrait and then a fucking meteorite hits your house and just incinerates everything. You included. Okay? Nothing is left. Was it worth doing? Took me about two weeks to answer that question. During, okay. during the, the run across America. Mm -hmm. Two weeks to answer. Was it worth doing? What, what is the answer? My answer was yes. Yes. Okay. I, I think that, that, that uh, beauty, that those six things, they have the characteristic that they pay for themselves. They, they have their own intrinsic value, uh, independent of anything else. So when you, when you do a painting, even if you're going to burn it later, it doesn't matter because the beauty is important on itself. Okay. You know, like, like friendship, like love, you know, like things like that. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I'm almost first mm -hmm. first thing. Mm -hmm. um, so from your argumentation, mm -hmm. I would say... Um, Especially on that on that knowledge, or mm -hmm. what, what do you say? Knowledge, knowledge. knowledge. Yeah. yeah, knowledge. Yeah, okay, but you said, for example, the Brexit, which is a political science, mm -hmm. uh, is not not uh, knowledge. And then you say, oh, they should raise the bar. I'm interested in right. bending let's, metal and let, playing let, music. Let's, so let's, let's the, make it the, more clear. It's the written word. Let's right make it more clear at how I rate. Brexit and most other political things in the scale of importance of knowledge. One day during El Camino, I was watching a dog take a shit. And for some reason, it was kind of funny. To me, 
that memory and that knowledge is more important than politics and Brexit and bullshit that is on TV. But that doesn't make a difference. No, that and uh, sorry to to, 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 to disagree. Yes, yeah. but the point is the point. It might disagree to you as much as you want. Yeah. But then shouldn't you respect others that it means something to them? It means something for some people. Exactly. For, especially if you're English. It's like, yeah, you know, it's like when you say the yeah. phrase that the, 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 the man, the dog beat the man. That knowledge is important, especially if you are the man or if you are the dog. Right? right? Because you are involved in that situation. Yes. I am not. It's like discussing, you know, the shark attacks in Australia. I could not possibly give less of a shit was... about it. Because it's not part of my reality yet. I may care about it for a minute if I ever go there. Which I would like to, you know. But, but talking, discussing that right now. You know, when I am doing whatever, uh, it's so low. The priority is so low. Exactly. You know, for let, you, let, but me you're... let me tell you where my priority is today. Uh, it's right here. Where is that f book? You have a book here about Japan that I thought was brilliant. A uh, Geek in uh, Japan? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's somewhere around here on this table. Uh, I don't want to leave without taking a good look at that book yeah it's, it's a great uh, book it's awesome because oh, wow. japan is in my horizon you see it's getting closer yeah. you know it's getting closer and i thought wow this is a lot of very good useful information in a format that i can digest quickly it's high priority right brexit yeah. is low priority that's that's what i'm saying but for someone else it may be the opposite yeah, you right. Know? Okay, now, now we are on the because same Because those page. things are measured on an individual basis, you know? Because uh, that is the, the only basis that actually exists. Sure. Right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, my priorities are high for me. Exactly. Who, who, which are totally exactly. different from someone else. Um, that is, that is uh, one of the basic premises of uh, libertarianism, is that understanding that I cannot tell for sure what is better for you. Okay. I, can, I can have some opinions, exactly, but I cannot tell for sure. And we can talk about it. Yeah. And then I can, yeah. if I, and that's another yeah. point, if I listen to you, then I can yeah. think about it. Exactly. I met quite a few people who don't listen to mm -hmm. each other. The, the moment I start a conversation mm -hmm. or a topic, they already know how to respond and they don't mm -hmm. really listen to my argument. I think you really? love the podcast I did with Mark Tuner, which was about that. Mm -hmm. Well, after we talk a lot about pirates and oh, the guy. Yeah, <laughs> yes. about yeah. talking about pirates and and rum and and wine and and diving and motorcycles stuff like that. But we talk a lot also about um, uh, science, uh, science literacy, and and the point was that uh, if it's usually if you have some background in physics or if you play chess or if you have a pretty good grasp of logic. Uh, so if you were in generally exposed to sciences very well, uh, you will be able to have discussions in which you keep things suspend, suspended for a, for a little while. For example, uh, I expose an argument and you tell me something and I may have to, to say, now I need time. Oh, yeah. You know, because that's I will have to examine your point. That now. is a nice. Maybe because you said something that I'll have to verify or read about, or maybe because you mentioned a video that I didn't watch, so I'll have to go back. So if the that issue that we are talking about is important enough, I may have to tell you that I need time, and then I go back and I look into that, learn about, improve my opinion about it, and I come back and we continue, yeah. and we continue that discussion, yeah. right? Um, and that is a methodology, that is a language for that, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, uh, science gives us. It's a language that we use even to talk about things that are not science, mm -hmm. or the most complex of examinations, which is to use the method to examine the method itself. There are, you can read books and books about it. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was talking to this uh, with Mark, and later... Uh, off off the air, we we, uh, we we 
we mentioned um, that I, I study uh, chess in school and I had a pretty good uh, teacher and just as an exercise we which was an amazing exercise we used to play chess without the board so using just a notepad so okay. we would make the moves and imagine the pieces on the board and and then sometimes we would just you know cross paths in school because he was a teacher I was a student and but then we would hand a note to each other with the next move you know so when he saw me he would have a note to give it to me but I couldn't put that on the board if I can't remember where things are I have to go back to the notes from the first move and go back putting them out placing them on the board know where they are and then I think of the next move and write it down and make the note for him so we like one game of chess would take like three months mm -hmm. you know going this way uh, and it actually uh, it gets easier as you go because you have less fewer pieces yes sure, you know sure, so sure. it gets gets easier uh, but it was an incredible exercise uh, I, and I love that that I, I have a few friends with which we can discuss things and then we do that is pursuit of knowledge then we do where we talk about things that we don't know very well and we examine them and very often very often the answer is now I need time now I need time now I need time yeah you know that's how you know that you are that you are both uh, exploring areas that you are still not sure you're going beyond the boundaries of what you know mm -hmm. uh, and that's the kind of discussion that I love to have. Uh, one of the reasons that I'm doing the podcast, among several others, is is that I have a passion for it. Passion for examining things. And then later, I'm editing the podcast and I need to think about it. And sometimes I make notes of what I want to talk to that same person or to others in the future. Mm -hmm. you know? um, uh, because we can follow up. Yeah, so sure. imagine a, a conversation that you can have with a friend that that one conversation goes over a year or two mm -hmm. and you're you are still in one still subject you are just going really slow and careful yeah, yeah, yeah you know to not make any bad assumptions to not you know to not say um, anything just because you're presuming and, and rushing mm -hmm. rushing ahead and, and I love that absolutely love that it's one of the six ones mm -hmm. um, and that is uh, another thing that I like to mention. Um, you may feel that in, in even in martial arts, you may do that. You know, the only martial art that I do is full contact origami. So uh, <laughs> that's the only one. Uh, it's like this. So one day I was was walking in a, in a somewhere. I don't remember. But I saw this car that was very dusty. And in the back of the car, in the, in the window, someone drew uh, an image, like a portrait. But unlike most portraits that people draw with their finger, this one was gorgeous. It was this amazing image. Mm -hmm. and, and I stopped and I look at that and I thought, whoever did this knows that this beautiful art will be destroyed by the first rain or the first car wash, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and that's what triggered that question, was it worth doing? Mm -hmm. Knowing that it will be destroyed, right? Mm -hmm. Was it worth doing? Like, uh, and, and which is similar to several other things, like love. Is it worth loving that person knowing that it will be gone? And she will be gone. Yeah. It's still worth doing. Is it Absolutely. worth learning? Learning how to do... Today we're talking about magnets, right? Yes. About uh, design, uh, uh, pr uh, printed, ma uh, whatever they call it. Uh, yeah, printed the, magnets. Maybe. Printed magnets, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's fascinating stuff. It is. That feels better to know, mm -hmm. right? And then it's something that is there. You may use it one day, you know, yeah. it's some, something that you do. Um, so I, I, I saw that image in the back of the car. And I, was, and I was thinking about the nature of art. Uh, before there was recording, 
any kind of recording. If you wanted to listen to some music, someone had to play it. Okay. Right? And then if you want to listen to it again, they have to play it again. Mm-hmm. Right? There was it was that or your memory. Yeah. Right? So art was not the music. When you think of music as art at that time, there was music was not art. Playing it was the art. Yeah. Okay. Right? And I had a very interesting talk like that with a friend that he's a photographer. And uh, John, he's on my third or fourth podcast. And we talk about that on the podcast. And I and I, and I argue with him. And I, well, the argue is not a different right word because he wasn't super friends with this question. Well, but I, I, I point Just, out yeah. that when he takes a photo, the photo is not art. The photo is a product. I don't care about the photo. As beautiful as it is, the art, what the art is, is him taking the photo, mm-hmm. choosing, editing, preparing, getting it ready. If he sells and someone appreciates it, fine. But if he decides to destroy that print later because he didn't sell or because he no longer likes it, that doesn't make his act less art than it was before. Mm-hmm. If you if you erase all his pictures, yeah. that f- act of making the photos is still as art as it was before. Apply that same to traveling. Yeah, a journey yeah. you have no record of. Uh-huh. It's just the same journey as the journey you took. Is, All the pictures. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Now you just mentioned something that is super cool. The memory of it, right? I have been studying uh, uh, memory, uh, retention, uh, and how bad it is. You know, we retain very little. Yeah. Uh, There are only a few moments and some, you know, you remember. That's how you have pictures. Yeah, you remember a a dinner with someone. You remember, you know, one day that you fell from the bike. You remember a dog taking a shit. You know, you remember emotional certain things. Yeah, certain emotional parts. But most of it you don't remember. Yeah. And one day I went back to by, by car to some place in Arizona and and I stopped at the road where I went through running. And I was looking at that and I couldn't believe that I did it. The more I looked at it, the less real it seemed. It's very weird. Not just how I didn't retain the memory of it very well. But also how looking at the places made it worse okay. instead oh. of making it better. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have been measuring that a lot. Like uh, recently I was in Innsbruck. Mm-hmm. And I recognized some places I was there like in 2011. I recognized some places. I recognized. I knew more or less where I was in the city. I recognized the, the train station. Some details like that but I didn't even feel that I was there before it was just an intellectual thing of knowledge that I was there so all that time that I was in Innsbruck was erased pretty much erased from my memory Mm -hmm. so now your question does that mean that it was pointless to do it not at all it was awesome yeah so in and then now I think when I'm doing the trips very often when I see something or, or I, I discover something interesting or I see uh, a, 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 an interesting situation, I think I have to enjoy it right now because I'm not going to remember this. I, I think agree. that. Yeah. yeah. But then I w- want to add um, the, pic- the art of pictures uh-huh. you already discussed. I took a lot of pictures during this year. Mm-hmm. And... I didn't have a good camera. I have just my, mm-hmm. my cell phone camera. Mm-hmm. And they were just sometimes really ugly ones. Just I'm there, ch- took mm-hmm. a picture. Not Nothing art- like artistic with mm-hmm. all the shades or whatsoever. Mm-hmm. You know, why I do this is to mm-hmm. help my memory. Mm-hmm. Because 
now when I when I when I'm at my computer and I'm like, okay, let's look at Japan. You yeah. look at Japan, and then I mm. see the pictures standing with five or six Japanese girl in this mm. in this machine which makes big eyes mm -hmm. and, and like uh, mm -hmm. red lips or whatever. And I'm like, right, I was there, and mm -hmm. now I remember. I didn't think about mm. it before, but yeah, sometimes they looking at those that, pictures yeah. is like a anchor yeah. to bring you back yeah. at this moment. They have two uses actually. This is one. And the other is uh, uh, photos of travels can be very inspiring and interesting to people that were not there in the photo. So, for example, on the podcast, when I edit the video, I add photos mm -hmm. of, like, I go to your Facebook or I ask you to send me an email with a bunch of photos. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes people have videos as well, and I put them on the podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, because for the people watching the podcast... That can be fascinating, yeah, because you have been to experiences that they never did. True. You know? For example, you were saying earlier the shark attack. I was in uh -huh. Fiji, uh -huh. and the girl was diving with me, and we were diving with sharks, and uh -huh. the girl was bitten by a shark. Uh -huh. That's one memory of, of mine, and nobody, you uh -huh. don't know how it exactly. was. Exactly. And I still see the shark. Uh -huh. Like I see in the shark in uh -huh. her arm, and uh -huh. like, and they are attached to each other. It's, uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You. You. You're, you're right. You're right. <laughs> yeah. There is some some amazing things to discover when you have the time to to, to really think about them mm -hmm. and, and look about them. Uh, the meaning of things. You know what is important, what is not. You know uh, those things matter. Yeah. Uh, because they drive the way that we spend our time. You know, our time is the only thing that is really, really limited. I'm very careful with what, how I spend it. Why is it that people make fun of this beer? Oh, it's, it's a good beer. Uh, well, <laughs> is this German at least? Let's yeah, see. yeah, it is German. Where is but this it's from? Like the the cheapest and where is it? Where you was from? From Oettingen. Because it's called Oettingen. Mm -hmm. It's the cheapest and 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 worst beer you could yeah, get. It's okay for me. Um, I just care that it's very cold. It is, it is. Yeah. As an American, <laughs> no ice here. Yeah. Yeah, that, that I must be tough. I put ice on your fridge. Did I? I have this, this thing about Europe that, you know, uh, Europeans usually don't have ice. That's true. And sometimes they have a house that is like worth a million euros and they don't spend fucking 50 cents to buy an ice tray. Um yeah, that's and, true. And usually, and there is no ice to buy anywhere, you know, so I don't know how you fucking primitives survive <laughs> without having ice. Um, Probably gonna die very soon, all yeah. of us. <laughs> yeah. And, and and I do, you know, so there is this hashing thing, which is we drink beer and we run. Yeah. And then we drink more beer. So many times we meet, like, in a parking lot or behind the store or out in the forest. And... If it is Europeans organizing it, oh fucking shit, the beer will be warm, you know, because they'll just put it in a bag and leave it somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, there is no care yeah. about it, and and in America we cover it in ice. Yeah, that's you know, true. All the time, the beer <laughs> can be as hot as it wants. The beer will be nice. I I mean, yeah. I have to be the Americans or you Americans, you know how to live. That's yeah. like sometimes. Oh, no, no, at least the, the yeah, really we don't know how to make good beer. We have a few good beers there, but there are not many. Uh, but at least we know how to serve it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, same in South America. In South America, they are very criterious. The temperature has to be very just perfect, mm -hmm. and they like they like European beers there right. very much. Well, I found out that a lot of like. In the United States, in Australia, in, in mm -hmm. New Zealand, um, Singapore, mm -hmm. there I found a lot of Belgian, Belgian beer. Mm -hmm. And the Be Belgian beers have all... Well, those I drank. I didn't, mm -hmm. by far, didn't drink all of that. But those I drank had a lot, a high amount of um, yeast in it. Mm -hmm. And I just don't like yeast beers like yeah. also the german yeast beers uh, weizen or, mm -hmm. or weiss beer 
And mm-hmm. it's like, I don't, just don't like. And so mm-hmm. everywhere I, I went there, like, we have really good beer. It's <laughs> European beer. I'm like, give it to me. And they're like, no, oh, it's yeasty no. beer. So, um, yeah, once I found like German restaurant and they mm-hmm. had like non yeast beer, I'm like, oh, I would recommend you keep trying Belgian beers and find the great ones because they have a great variety. It's a, it, it's a fantastic beer culture there. Yeah. And, and, I, and, and I enjoy a lot of them. But uh, you know, Chimay, arguing, and or Lester. arguing about a beer with the German is tough. No, I know. No, I, 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 I know it's totally, um, um, how's it called? Well, no, especially, Subjective, especially but... American arguing about beer with a German. <laughs> that would be pathetic. Yeah, I know, I know. There are there are some things that people kind of own that culture, right? True, it's like true, yeah. it's like Brazilians believe that 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 you know being the best and knowing more about soccer is their birthright. Uh, you know, Germans like to know about beer. their cars and their beer, yeah. and mm-hmm. and. Americans, we know about bombing things, so don't disagree with me and don't piss me off or I bomb you. <laughs> That's what we are good at. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Since we are at stereotypes, French yeah. friends at surrendering, uh, we still uh, joke about it. But I, I, I got curious once, and I was reading uh, some summary of the military history of France. And there is no such thing as as a lot of surrendering there. There is only one case that it's is like notorious, and I think it was the right decision. Yeah. They saved a lot of people by surrendering Oops. at the right time, yeah. and then resisting as the best they could, and then later, yeah, then America went there and helped. But if if they had fought back. Germany was so much stronger mm-hmm. that you know it would completely destroy France, mm-hmm. and 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 that was that was the, the 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 they took the rational decision at the time, you know, and that it, people shouldn't make fun of other people taking rational decisions. Oh, oh my you God! Know, gee, but what? but 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 now now we need to be careful. I mean, uh-huh. making jokes of somebody like. With Cher- what is the joke about German? No humor. No humor. Yeah. And then, okay, then you make fun of this and this. So uh, every, it's, <laughs> it's n- for sure I know, like, mm-hmm. or at least everybody mm-hmm. should know that mm-hmm. those are like playing with stereotypes. Yeah. And uh, I, I agree. It's I mean, funny, yeah. I mean, the Germans and the French had, like when you go centuries, like before this European project was mm-hmm. established after the Second World War, mm-hmm. the Germans and the French were not always very easy neighbors. Mm-hmm. Like there was the, the the last one, the Second World War. Before that, the First World War. Mm-hmm. Then we had a, a Thirty Years' War. We had like then the Napoleon came and, mm-hmm. and conquered what is nowadays Germany. So mm-hmm. we have a really high conflict rate there i know every and, everybody here invaded everybody it's amazing yeah and now with the european project with the european union we have we have overcome all that yeah and and for my grandparents generation this was new this was mm-hmm. an accomplishment they did mm-hmm. and for my generation it's just so normal and yeah. now we come back to the germans don't appreciate what they have and Unfortunately, that applies to nowadays a lot of Europeans. They don't mm-hmm. really appreciate what they have. That they mm-hmm. can, that I can visit my French friend, and I have French friends, and ah, I can visit you're them. You're the one, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the one German. <laughs> no, and I can visit them without applying for a visa, without exchanging yeah. money. I remember when I was when I was a kid, we did mm-hmm. we made holiday in, in France, and we mm-hmm. have to exchange money. Mm. And then we went to Italy the next year, and we had to exchange money again. Yeah. And and then at the border, we always yeah we could go through. We didn't need a visa, but there was a control at the border. Yeah. And I remember that that because I night, still I drive through those things. There's nobody working there, but they yeah the beauty is still yeah. there. And then now <laughs> you can just walk and yeah. drive through, and, and that's just go so through. amazing. Yeah. And that's such a high accomplishment. And it's yeah. so pity that. 
nowadays more and more people take that for granted. Yeah. Or want to even eliminate or that. Or want to eliminate yeah. that. I, I don't think it's... Even the this new peace period, I believe it's really lasting. It's not... Even if the European Union changes shape, uh, you know, European countries are not going to go back into invading each other. You know, that is, uh, once you know this period, I don't think it's changed. Uh, you know, barring like some really unusual circumstance. But some, a, a lot of the, the accomplishments are here to stay. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. I mean, I can. I, I cannot I imagine. As you said, I cannot yeah. imagine some European country invades another European. That's yeah. so far away. Mm -hmm. But my grandparents were invading another country. Yeah. Both of my grandfathers. Mm -hmm. My my grandfather on my mother's side was fighting mm -hmm. in Russia and was in in mm -hmm. Russian prisons. Mm -hmm. My grandfather on my father's side, he was. Uh, the submarine when the Normandy got invaded by the Americans, mm -hmm. so they were actually fighting. Yeah, and it's just my grandparents. It's not my grand grand or what's that? Yeah. It's just my grand. And I knew mo both of them, all, all of all four of them. Yeah. No, uh, uh, I heard some people talking. Oh yeah, the, the Europeans. They, they like if you can demonstrate that that if you your parents or your grandparents where from an European country they will give you a passport you know it's most countries they have some rules more or less in that sense and uh, Ireland is very notorious for that and Italy okay and but and, but then someone asked me oh Mil don't you have some because my last name is Miller he confused Miller with Miller Miller mm -hmm. so he said oh aren't you Miller maybe you have a German grandparent I said well first of all if I had a German grandparent I don't know if I was going to go telling you about it. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but but it's not the case. It's English. It's not okay. Not, not, not German. Actually, uh, Robin Williams said well, a very tough one uh, when during an interview they ask why why the problem of no sense of humor in Germany and mm -hmm. why is it that there is no comedy in Germany? And he said, "Oh, maybe because you guys killed all the funny people." <laughs> Bad. That was bad. <laughs> yeah, but um, actually, I, I, I mean, I also mm -hmm. met quite a lot of Americans, mm -hmm. and then what I met a, a girl who spoke some German, like not, not that you can really communicate, but she yeah. understood quite well, and mm -hmm. her mother was able to speak German, mm -hmm. and this girl, she actually said, well, actually, the Germans are funny. But when you translate mm -hmm. the jokes, due to the translation, they lose so much yeah. that whenever you translate a joke, you're like, and you laugh about that shit. Yeah. It's like <laughs> so difficult to, yeah. to, to translate. Yes. Yeah. So, and, and some guys are testing the limits of it. Like Chris Rock, like Doug Stanhope, uh, Bill Burr. They are, they are coming here and they are telling their jokes without changing they readily change or select Engli English. anything in english for a public that is of course there is a number of expats but that they also tell it to a number of uh, locals that speak english mm -hmm. and it's going through and they are figuring out what works and and what doesn't but generally it works like uh, recently i saw an interview with bill burr he was talking about uh, sweden and norway where he was recently, mm -hmm. and he said I didn't. He didn't even change anything. He was just telling his yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, as usual, and people were getting just occasionally, like very occasionally, he would say something, and the room would stay quiet. And but it was like once or one or two moments during the yeah, entire yeah. show. So so that is that is uh, enough commonality because the the. English humor and the American humor are similar enough that people can can get it. And every time, I believe that every time that a, a comedian says something and people don't understand, they it, it, or it's not funny, they presume that they just didn't understand it. 
and okay. that works in 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 favor of the communion. Mm-hmm. And I know cause I I did stand up comedy. In, oh, you did in, in Ukraine. Oh, nice in Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, so the public was about one third expats, two thirds was Ukrainians that spoke English. All right. And sometimes I would, you know, I have my 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 stories, my that I tell and all that. Occasionally they would not understand something because it it, it wasn't tuned perfectly yet. Uh, so the joke was not good enough. Maybe mm-hmm. uh, they would just presume they didn't understand. Mm-hmm. And there is only there is always one guy that laughs. <laughs> somewhere there's only there is always <laughs> one here or there so they presume oh he understood it yeah you know but i didn't okay <laughs> so it's actually nicer to play comedy in front of a, a foreign of an, of a foreign audience yeah and, and and you can play with some jokes that that will uh, i did that because uh, most of my material is about traveling mm-hmm. or at least i, I use the traveling stories to keep everything together mm-hmm. and and i tell i i tell the stories that way and i i'm able to include material that is specific to the country mm-hmm. because i i tell about my travels to that country mm-hmm. you know so i have a couple of jokes that are specifically to ukraine uh, specific to that um they love it mm-hmm. and it's funny one of them i told the joke the Ukrainians love it, and the Americans were looking at each other. Said, "What did they say?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally sure. didn't get it. Um, but it was it was super specific. You would have to know Ukrainian history to mm-hmm. to, to get to that one. That. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, man. What are the plans for the for the near future? What are my plans? Yeah. Um, oh wow. Okay. Working a year, then not working a year. No, actually. I changed during this year. I I told you part of Mm -hmm. my purpose, Mm -hmm. whether I gave it Mm -hmm. after that or it was there all Mm -hmm. the time. One part I told you was to get a closure from my Mm -hmm. ex-girlfriend. And then I was free and continued continued traveling. Mm -hmm. And then I came to Australia Mm -hmm. and I was in Canberra. That, which is the capital there, mm. and I was on my way towards the parliament, and I needed a toilet, mm-hmm. so I looked for an official building to go inside and mm-hmm. ask for the restroom, and it turned out it was a science museum, and this mm-hmm. guy said like, hey, listen, it's admission free today, so mm-hmm. if you want to check it out, check it out, mm-hmm. okay, I have no plan, I want to go to the parliament, but I can go mm-hmm. to the parliament an hour later as well, mm-hmm. so I went there, and I saw all those tiny experiments with like you push there and something happens and all oh, mm-hmm. those m- and I wish how wonderful it would be to have at least an alibi kit you know somebody you could at least what? an alibi kit? Uh, you, uh, alibi. Alibi, alibi, uh-huh. I don't know the pro- pronunciation uh, uh, alibi alibi kit okay so alibi. be like hey you, so I can I can use all those those things and explain uh-huh. it to someone uh-huh. and that was just a thought. Like, and now was, you want to have kids. And then I was sitting at the in, in New Zealand on a on a uh, rock at the ocean and looking mm-hmm. at the at the waves. And, was, and yes. And <laughs> I know we are totally on a different page on that on that chapter. But the point is mm-hmm. I did everything I wanted to do. Wanted to do. I have a really good job. I have mm-hmm. an amazing company. I do something I really like to do. Where mm-hmm. I go every day and I like mm-hmm. to go there. I, well, how to put, I was playing around enough. Mm-hmm. I had my experiences mm-hmm. and I saw the world. I traveled mm-hmm. with the world. I saw incredible places. Mm-hmm. I met amazing people. Mm-hmm. And now I'm ready. Now you want to, 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 to have family? Yes. And all that. Yeah. Uh, I really, I really believe that if 
people want to do that, they should travel first. So I, I think you did that in the right sequence. Mm -hmm. um, they should really travel a lot. Because mm -hmm. if they choose a more um, localized lifestyle, it's the, it's a clear choice now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not by default. Yeah. It, exactly. So you don't you didn't just fall on this lifestyle. Yeah. Right. You chose it. It's, yeah. It's different. And it's different. and it comes from from the inside because when I was sixteen, I already knew mm -hmm. I will be father someday. Yeah. And then I had in my past, I had multiple relationships and. I had I also had a relationship. I was three and a half years together with this girl, and mm -hmm. I lived together with her. And she she's a wonderful girl, but it was always this someday, someday. It was always far away, even though I already had the age to mm -hmm. be father. Like, mm -hmm. and now I feel, yeah, but but I always felt back then mm -hmm. someday in the future, not yet. Mm -hmm. And now I feel okay. Now it's yeah. it's good. And I don't have a I don't have a girlfriend. I don't have It's a, usually necessary, I think. It's it's necessary. <laughs> However, um it's not, you know, I feel I feel so happy with my mm. situation, my life, with everything mm. that I just know it's gonna happen yeah. one or the other way. You don't need to rush. I don't mm. need to rush. I'm mm. ready whenever mm. the universe or whatever is gonna mm -hmm. send it to me yeah. this girl she will come so yeah and now I'm ready so I'll be back to Germany many times maybe next year you're driving a minivan full of soccer balls <laughs> you have a For, five before, seats before that <laughs> I'm gonna invite you to my wedding you know <laughs> man yeah. with all due respect please don't like, that's a horror show that I don't go to watch for anybody <laughs> No. I invite you, you don't have to come. If you, know? you want me to watch that kind of spectacle, no, thank you so much. Um, I'll come in for the for the for the honeymoon if you need, but you and me will have to... <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> come in no, for but... the honeymoon. It's funny, I went to a <laughs> talking about that. Uh, uh, I went to a bike week in Sturgis in, uh, many years ago, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and there was this uh, this this big shower the shower houses. How do I say? You know, so it's like there are the bathrooms. This 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 campgrounds are huge. Oh, so okay. when you go to the bathrooms, there are like like fifty stalls, and mm -hmm. and then you go to the showers, there are like a hundred showers. Yeah, together, yeah, yeah. Right? Gotcha. So they have one house that is for the men, the one house for uh, the woman, and and but there are like a hundred showers. But when when you go to take a shower, like after midnight, mm -hmm. you know a lot of people already drink because then there is no there are no lines. But a lot of people were drinking, and it's in the middle of the night. So sometimes you go to take a shower, and there is a couple there. All right. And and one day I was. I was there, beginning to take my shower, and there was this couple playing on the other, on the next stall. <laughs> and I said, hey, if you need any help, just call me. <laughs> but then the girl answered, yeah, come here, suck his dick. I said, no, bitch, I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> I was not talking to you. <laughs> Wrong side. <laughs> well, that's not what I had in mind. <laughs> oh, that was funny yeah. Um, well, so you, yeah you are going to be a family man one day one day one yeah. day you, I don't know when but did you did I get it confused that you or did you say that you had a motorcycle at some point I, I did I did yeah. many many years ago uh -huh. many years ago yeah and I loved it and mm -hmm. um, yeah I mean I was the last few years I was mm -hmm. saving for this journey yeah um, I'm already playing with the thought of like maybe mm -hmm. for the next summer to buy one, mm -hmm. yeah. because I really love having a motorcycle. Really, and around here there's a great area. Did you ever consider driving through the Franconia, Switzerland? It's it's not so I, far from here, and it's quite I nice. did, I did uh, in 2012. All right, okay. Yeah. Of course, don't remember anything. Of course, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and no pictures are taken. Take some pictures. Okay. No, but I, I remember certain things. Uh, I definitely remember a lot of people. 
people are much easier to remember than places. Sure. Um, I remember the routes more or less. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes, even when I go to a place that I have been to before, I have to look at it all over. Yeah. That's that's all right. That's good. It, it creates, just like the thought that you will die makes you pay more attention to life, makes you live better. Mm -hmm. uh, in that sense, the possibility or the certainty in that case, the certainty of death makes your life better. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the I, the knowing that you will not remember things well. And, not, uh, uh, and I keep talking about my memory. I may give the impression that perhaps I don't have a good memory. Or, no, I have a regular memory, just like everybody else. Yeah. But if you measure what you really retain... I, I so agree. I agree. Uh, I'm just aware of it. I became very aware mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. So I enjoy the moment a little more. Because mm. I know it's not going to last. Mm. But you mentioned something which I thought is really interesting because you travel the same way I travel. You said you remember more the uh, the people. Yeah. And the interesting part about your journey through Europe is mm -hmm. that you travel and visit people. Yeah, I don't go from than, yeah, than, I don't visit places. I don't travel from place to place. I travel from person to person. Exactly. Yeah. So I go. I rarely go to a city that I'm not planning to visit someone that is not already arranged or planned or maybe a couch surfer, maybe, you know, a friend that I met before or someone that moved over there. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is always people that I'm, that I'm meeting. Yeah. Uh, not even like the first year in 2011, I was couch surfing a lot and every, I would say every 10 days or so, I would take one day, just to be alone and not couch surf at all, and I would mm -hmm. take a hotel or something. Now I don't even feel that need anymore. Mm -hmm. I can I can go visiting people one day after another for months mm -hmm. without feeling any discomfort. Yeah. So that that came with time, um, and, and and I believe that this will become more intense as Voyagers will you know uh, takes off and people. Uh, uh, sign up because I'm building a network which is the network that I wanted to use mm -hmm. when I was traveling in 2014 with Kim I was very often thinking that so uh, you know I, I, I wish there was a network that had these characteristics yeah so I decided to build a network with those characteristics yeah. so I'm building it I'm building the website that I want to use mm -hmm. that's exactly what it is and I think that it will be much easier to connect to people and, and find find the right people, find a good company for tra for traveling. It will be a lot easier. Yeah, and um, I mean, I was traveling this year not as intense as you did. Mm -hmm. I did not necessarily um, couch surf that much, mm -hmm. but I, I traveled like you from person to person. So mm -hmm. that means... If I knew somebody, I visited him or her, and mm -hmm. if I met someone by accident, for example, this girl in New Zealand, I met her by accident. We were sitting uh, in a hostel, and she was on that table, and I was on that table. Mm -hmm. This bunch of people I met on the mm -hmm. hostel, and we made friends. We had a good conversation, mm -hmm. and she was sitting there alone. So I said, "Hey, come on over, sit with us." Yes. And then, that easy, a friendship mm -hmm. was built up. Mm -hmm. And then when I came to Singapore, I visited her, and I think that is also one of my like what I what I what I learned from this journey is the place you are can be as beauty and pretty and amazing as mm -hmm. it is if you are there with a special person or a friend or someone you care for. Mm -hmm. It is by far better. And when you are, I mean, you can be with yourself. Don't get me wrong. You can be with yourself and yourself is this person you're with mm -hmm. right now. And then you enjoy it. But if you are alone, so you are, do you know what I mean? You oh, can't yeah. be in a bad mood, for example. I, I, travel, I, travel, I travel alone a lot and I travel 
with other people yeah very but, often as well so but there is a difference like between traveling alone and traveling lonely you yeah, know i'm never lonely i remember you asked me that question the other day in the exactly. restaurant yeah if i was alone or if i was lonely i said no i was alone exactly i was not alone and 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 that that's my point like you can be alone you can be with yourself and enjoying it mm -hmm. or you can be with someone yeah. or you can be with nobody like and um, tra the more you travel, I think, the more you learn appreciating who you are and, uh, yeah, like appreciating who you are and, and traveling with yourself. Yeah. And yeah. that's like how I travel a lot, very often, yeah. meeting people, mm -hmm. enjoying my life. Not in mm -hmm. Australia. In Australia, I was a lot by myself and then mm -hmm. uh, during the day. Evening mm -hmm. and morning, I had people around me. So uh, I met amazing people there. A family in, in Melbourne who kind of took me and I was living with them. The answers are funny. I, I like them. Hmm? From the accent, the Australians. Uh, uh, I like the accent. I like the sense of humor. Mm -hmm. You know, they're cool people. Mm -hmm. Really cool. Yeah. Oh, in, in, in Fiji, I met an Australian couple. Actually, she was English. He was Australian. Mm -hmm. uh, I was amazing people mm -hmm. it's just i think i think the, the point is with the entire network you're creating there mm -hmm. because traveling the world traveling in general is somehow you tend to meet likewise people because you are at those spots mm -hmm. you are at a hostel maybe you are the local who is into traveling mm -hmm. or you're at tourist places where tourists who are traveling there mm -hmm. So you meet so many likewise people, and that's incredible how good it is to to meet that amount of amazing people. Yeah. yeah. So we'll do more. We will. We'll keep we will. doing more. Um, I'm pretty busy with the website and traveling, and Europe feels like home more and more every year. <laughs> Uh, you guys are not getting rid of me very easy. That's good. That's um, good. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> very welcome to come. All right, man. Thank you so much for being on the may podcast. I, may I? Yeah. Since we want to end, I, I want to, to say one last sure. thing. Yeah. Because we were talking about the Americans. Yeah. And I want just to point out, as you said, there are always mm. exceptions. Yeah. And I want to point out that I met so many Amazing American. I told you I have this American yeah. family who took me like like their son and brother. Mm -hmm. And I had this I told you this this girl on the East Coast who brought me to this food program. Mm -hmm. So and and uh, or, or Jonathan, the, the guy who I couch surfed mm -hmm. with and he did so many great things for me. So mm -hmm. I just want to well, it's it's a great country too. You know? Yeah, to I like, 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 make I like this yeah, I like to criticize clear. America a lot because I feel comfortable doing that, uh, you know, because I live there and I know yeah. the place well. Um, but yeah, it's it's also full of very very interesting people. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday I was watching here a a video. Uh, it was some interview with Elon Musk, and and they opened for Q and A, and a bunch of people from the audience asked questions that were so good, like so well thought and i was thinking wow these people are fucking awesome like they are they're smart you know and, and they're there they're right there in america you know yeah, yeah, it, it okay. was it was some something in montana you know like a state that is like empty you know <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and the questions were so so good uh, mm -hmm. so yeah of course uh, um i heard someone say that Amer uh, if you think of oh yeah probably if you only count the really awesome amazing cool Americans you know if you raise the bar very high it's probably like 60 million people 80 million people surrounded by rednecks right but they are there they are amazing yeah exactly they're amazing it's it's a fun country to visit you know it's a it's really cool especially if you go open-minded and really willing to learn and understand that the culture is different it's not europe exactly it, exactly. it came yeah. up to be that way in a very particular way yeah. 
that's why the car culture that's why the guns that's why the music that's why the resilience and the politics and the show business you know it, those things have reasons to, ex yeah. to exist and and they have some kinks that need to be corrected and and probably will not <laughs> because we also have a problem but it's an exciting country it's yeah. funny and and it's beautiful to travel yeah uh, it, it's, it's especially the point once I understood because we always say Western cu Western culture mm -hmm. and once I understood Western culture doesn't exist because it is westernized but mm -hmm. the German culture is Western culture as the British culture is Western mm -hmm. culture as the America but those mm -hmm. are different cultures yeah. and once I stopped measuring America or American culture with German German thoughts or like how, ideas, how, mm -hmm. how I, then I understood way better, or uh, yeah, I appreciate it way more. Mm -hmm. The Americans are the way the Americans are yeah. because that's the cu the culture, the different yeah. culture. Yeah. It it is a very interesting country, and uh, and I'll definitely be back yeah. sometime, like maybe this year. I won't be back later this year, but at some point I'm gonna go back to the states. <laughs> Also Canada. Mm -hmm. I don't want to. <laughs> I, I want to go to Canada and it's yeah. geographically also I heard, America. I heard the funniest thing ever about Canada today during a video. Uh, this guy said that Canada works in practice. Works out in practice. A lot better than it works out in theory. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was very interesting. All right, okay. man. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to visit you again and yeah. to do this podcast. Thank You're you. very welcome. <laughs> we hope you like this podcast as much as we like to produce it. This has been made possible by the efforts of dozens of volunteers, supporters, partners, and visionaries that are helping us build Forager's World. Please visit our website, join us for free, and start participating.